Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Newcastle Motorsports Park for the Cup Carts North America Grand National Championships GN7. You're watching live on Cart Chaser, the last chance qualifier on the racetrack getting set to go for Senior Light. 39 drivers on the racetrack all vying for the final 10 spots in the main event today. Again, Brady Eikhoff will lead us to uh, green here as we get set to go. Alongside him will be David Baker in the triple two machine. Logan Prince will start on the inside of row number two alongside Eli Fox in that all white new gen motorsport car. Tyler Ruth and Ethan Gray will make up row three. Aiden Shimbashi, Jackson Barr, row four. Pierre Thompson and Nagisa Yashikawa will make up row number five. And we won't be able to get going on the first try by. As uh, myself, Xander Clements here in the booth, joining me uh, as the day will go on will be the likes, of course, David Land down on pit lane, Tony the Toast Cirillo, and a good morning to you as well. Voice of the Cup Cars North America Racing, Dave Mack is hey. here and ready. And it's it's Grand National Championship Sunday. you got to be excited, Dave. I know it's been such a fun weekend to build to this point, but I can only imagine the goosebumps it's been for you for all seven Grand National Championships. <laughs> just gets bigger and bigger and better every single year. And now we're here. We're ready to crown some national champions later this afternoon. Yeah, it's going to be a really, really big deal today. Uh, welcome, everybody. Good morning, race fans. Welcome to Cup Cars North America version number seven, Grand National's version number Number seven, we're going to try to get a start here. This is the LCQ, 10 laps long. This is senior light. We also have juniors and senior medium. We originally were scheduled for senior heavy to do an LCQ, and we only would have had to send one person home, so we decided to allow that person in. So we are not having LCQ for senior heavy. 61 drivers will make up the field for senior heavy, one more than the standard cap at 60. 50 drivers automatically transferred through to the main event. This is the bottom 39 after the three rounds of heat races were completed that just missed it. And again, the cut line is 10th place. So as, as, as much as normally we'll focus on the leader for last chance qualifier racing, we're going to have our cameras right on that bubble spot, that last ticket to the big show. P10 is the cut line for those watching along at home and getting set to go green. And Nag Nagisa Yashikawa starts on the hot seat in 10th. Quentin Murdoch, first driver out alongside Drake Tiff there in row six. And the rest of the 39 drivers are ready. Senior light is underway as we go down to turn number one. And it's a good start for Brady Eikhoff as he leads the field. And a couple drivers are off there. And that looked like they might have been from the inside of the top 10. So we already have lost two as they go wide out of turns one and two. And the leaders will take us out out of turn number four and up the crest into the horseshoe section for the first time today. Good start at least for what looks to be the first kind of three rows, I think. They're safe and well on, but it's a full line of cars and we're already side by side for third. Eli Fox to the inside for fourth position there. He'll get through to get himself back, gets crossed over and they're still side by side and this battling further back. These are all the drivers outside the cut line uh, trying to get themselves up and into the top 10 here as the day continues to roll through the green corner. Side by side for third, Fox as well. Door to door, and I think that might be with Logan Prince or Tyler Ruth. Looks like Tyler Ruth to me in the ruthless carding uh, OTK. Side by side still, Ruth hangs on. So it's Tyler Ruth in the third spot. Eli Fox in that fourth position. Again, all those drivers still inside the top 10 safely. And while they are fighting a good bit here with a couple spins further back in this LCQ, the more they fight, the farther back they'll fall towards the clutches of 10th place. So it looks like we've got uh, eight cars in this lead pack. There's ninth. Here's 10th and 11th, the bubble spot together at the end of lap number one here, Dave. Yeah, and currently in 10th place is Ethan Gray. 11th place is Nagasa Yoshikawa. So that's the all-important set. But Yagasa has to get up one more spot. He has to get forward one more spot here. Uh, Top 10 so far, Brady Eikhoff, Logan Prince, Tyler Ruth, Eli Fox, David Baker, Jackson Barr, Aiden Shimbashi, Pierre Thompson, Quinton Murdoch, and Ethan Gray. That's your top 10. That's who's going to make it so far. We hate, at Cup Carts, we hate to send anybody home, but we just, there's just too many carts entered. So somebody's got to go home, and this is going to determine who. And there'll be a lot of guys going home. Here's the look. I think that's side-by-side -side for the bubble spot further back while the lead pack continues to fight. Eli Fox gets through on Tyler Ruth. That's the all-white machine for Eli. The black and orange expiry of Tyler Roof there uh, falls back to third. That 10th place group now is starting to get a little bit bigger, though, as it looks like one of the invaders maybe has worked its way past uh, both Nagisa Yashikawa 
and Ethan Gray. If not, Ethan, if not, that'd be an Ethan Gray as one more. That, that's Ethan Gray there in the 221. He gets shuffled, and Ethan Gray now goes from safely in the show to outside the show as he drops back a number of spots, still going backwards here as there's a few drivers that have made some major moves. Nagisa Yashikawa is now up into 10th, but keep your eye on that beer alert that just went by. That's David Barnes. He had to start way back, tail end Charlie. 32nd, he's up 16 spots so far, continuing to move forward with eight laps to go here in this LCQ. David Barnes is on the charge to try and race his way into the Grand National Championship final. Could he do it from 32nd on the grid as he runs in 15th right now? That'd be a mega charge. Remember we talked, Dave, yesterday, the biggest mover was Ryan Cassidy, picked up 30 spots. David Barnes doesn't have to pick up all 32 from starting 32nd. He needs to pick up 22 to get into that top 10 and to transfer into the main event. And again, while all of these guys in the lead pack are all safely up front, the more they battle, the more guys get into the mix, and all of a sudden you go from being safe to not so safe there because now it's nine cars in the lead group and 10th there with Nagisa Yashikawa, and everyone else is closing on in. Yeah, normally we pay real close attention to the front two, three, four cars. This time we're not. We're watching back in 10th, 11th place, see what's going on back there. Um, everybody up front is going to make it in. Everybody behind 10th is going home. So, yeah, and here they're coming down the straightaway. Not a whole lot of action. Not a whole lot of people moving around. Remember, this is a long race. It's a total of eight laps, or t yeah, 10 laps long. Yep, 10 laps, seven laps to go now as they put three in the books. Uh, Eli Fox just pushing with uh, Brady Eikhoff up front. They're staying single file. That's why we're watching this group further back here. Will Lawler, fastest car on the racetrack with the white gloves there. He's getting a little bit of help from Brooks Anderline. Will Lawler just at the fastest lap of the race. He's up to, uh, 12 spots so far from 23rd on the starting grid. Will Lawler is now about to make a move to get into the show. Will Lawler through the inside there. He gets through and clear in the number 10 and takes over, and he'll bring one of the uh, Cole Nelson Racing Invaders by, trying to get by at least. That was Brooks Anderline trying to follow. Now he'll end up losing a spot. Coming through is Drew Zuck. Drew Zuck up seven spots. Make it eight. He's now climbing forward, I believe, on maybe a VLR, if uh, I'm not mistaken. No, it looks uh, Tony Cart there for uh, Drew Zuck in the number 28. So he gets forward, and just like that here now, more drivers close on in. Toby Pu uh, Puetz, uh, David Barnes, Caden Drummond, all in the low teens, all on the outside looking in as we approach the halfway mark here. S uh, four down, six to go. Eli Fox has taken over the lead. More battling at the edge of, uh, this is for 11, Nagisa Yashikawa trying to hang on as he's now fallen outside the show in the 98 car. And on his bumper is Drew Zuck there in the 28 looking to go by. So is Brooks Anderline. Caden Drummond is right there as well as they go on the short shoot. Nobody able to get by Nagisa Yashikawa. He's trying to hang on, and there's nearly contact, oh. and Nagisa's off the racetrack. He's going to spin. Oh, no. Oh, and he collects one more of the 376. Caden Drummond was an innocent bystander, so frustrated. Nagisa Yashikawa was just hanging on for dear life, though, Dave Mack. He could see his chances getting further and further up the road, out of shot of him making the final. He was trying to hang on and fight the pass, and he ended up getting pushed off the racetrack, kept his foot in it, and that wet grass here early this morning spun him off to the wayside. So he's out now. Five uh, laps in, five to go at the line, and we've just shaken up the bubble spot conversation. Will Lawler is uh, trying to work his way further safely into the field as he closes up to a few more. But here's the update on the lineup as they work their way on down to the front stretch this time. Cross flags from Jason Burgess, halfway in, halfway home. The leaders have broken away, and now it's only four in the lead pack, and the back half of it is no longer safe as they go through turns one and two. Yeah, that's very, very unfortunate uh, back there for the, the, going off the track. That does happen, though, and attrition is going to be a bugger today. I'm sure it's going to happen again. Well, another driver on the move is Reagan Seville. He's uh, also closing in on uh, getting himself into the big dance. Uh, he and David Barnes were faster than most drivers last time by. They're still a second back from uh, the bubble spot of Drew Zuck, who is running uh, by his lonesome here. They're trying to catch up to him. There is David Barnes, and he's leading Reagan Seville. So this group is 11th. Uh, 12th and 13th there with Brooks Anderline on the Cole Nelson Racing Team Blue and Yellow Invader go-kart. So coming into the infield here by battling more uh, just inside the top 10. This is going to back them up. This is great news for 11th, 12th, and 13th. 
They're just out of frame. There they are. That is, again, just outside the bubble spot trying to catch them with four laps to go with as fast as these guys are. Reagan Seville up 18 spots. David Barnes up 21. They are so close to getting into the main event here. There you can see it that the bubble spot there just up the road from them. Drew Zuck in the 28 and Logan Prince in the 319 is less than a second away with four laps to go. Two of the fastest cars on the racetrack are closing in to try and punch their ticket to the big show on Sunday. This is going to be exciting here in these last four laps, oh, yeah. Dave. <laughs> Absolutely, that uh, Reagan Seville and uh, David Barnes watch them. That's that's all the best action on the track. Oh, one of the leaders just pulled off the racetrack there at the top oh, of the no. hill. I don't know if that was one of our leaders or not. Just bailed out into the scale line. So either that was a lap car or that was one of our leaders that just went straight off the racetrack and into the scales. It might have just moved David Barnes into the show. Will Lawler there, he's continuing to climb up the order. He's now up 16 spots, I think maybe up 17. And this is a pass for the transfer. I think David Barnes goes through on Logan Prince. Prince is off to the side. He's having to let cars by. I think he might have got a penalty flag or something. Logan Prince is dropping back the 372. Or no, that's Aiden Shimbashi. Aiden Shimbashi, the 372, having to wave guys by. He must have got a penalty flag for something or had a mechanical. So now, what does the run order look like as David Barnes and uh, Reagan Seville are trying to see if they're now safely in the top 10 as dropping back more on the factory card is still uh, Aiden Shimbashi. Barnes is in. Seville is out. David Barnes right now on the beer alert is the last driver in the race at the moment. Uh, he is there right there on the red and white colored machine. Seville behind him in the all-black trackside karting services G or, uh, GFC is uh, just in tow. And then there is Brooks Anderline. So the two at the end of this pack are on the outside looking in. But all of them, this goes up to about sixth or so with Pierre Thompson. So Pierre Thompson is the first driver in this group. He now gets shuffled back as going by is Drew Zuck in the 28. He gets through. Will Lawler will follow. That's for sixth and seventh. Just ahead of everyone battling to get in. And now Seville to the inside. Uh, David Barnes has been shuffled back. He gets through. That's, I think, on Logan Prince uh, in the white helmet. So Logan Prince might be out. Seville and Barnes are in for a moment. But Brooks Anderline working with Seville. Going to let him through. He'll stay on the outside. These guys are still charging. It's not over. We're coming to two laps to go right now. Eli Fox continues to lead the way a couple seconds up the road with help from Tyler Ruth. Our focus is on the bubble spot, though, but a good run continuing as the double sticks fly. Two to go here for everyone as we cross the line. And the new driver on the bubble is Reagan Seville. He is at least on the bumper of David Barnes. He's got a little gap out back, so he might have just raced his way in. It would be a 20-spot net gain for the all-blacked-out uh, entry of Reagan Seville. It would be a 23-spot net gain for David Barnes. And you start, I mean, these guys started basically at the back, almost on the last row to make it all the way up into the top 10. They were maybe weren't sure if they were going to get there. They've gotten there. Barnes now looking for another spot. This is just going to move him higher up the grid. This isn't to fight to get in. He's just got to be smart about it. He's side by side with the 18 uh, of Pierre Thompson for eighth. Has to give way. Reagan's going to go by. And guys, all three of you, whether you know it or not, you're safely in, but you fighting has just bought Brooks Anderline in in the invader. He's on the outside looking in to try and get into the race. And now he's got a chance because side by side is the 18 of Pierre Thompson. He's now back to the hot seat. We're coming to the white flag and 10th and 11th are bumper to bumper of who goes into the main show here, Dave. It doesn't get more exciting than oh, this. Oh, this is fantastic. So many spots picked up, 43 spots between 9th and 10th place. They picked up. Do you think they know um, if they're in t ninth or tenth place? Do you think they're able to count I mean, when they're on the track? You would think so. No, or maybe getting a so, signal, yeah. signal as well from their parents or mechanics on the sidelines saying, hey, you need one more spot because they pass them right here at the grid corner. So they know. And this is this is it. David Barnes and Reagan Seville. They're eighth and ninth just up in front of them in the uh, two-car pack. And in tenth on the bubble, Pierre Thompson is trying to hang on, trying to survive. He knows that he's losing a little bit of speed, and Brooks Anderline is ready to try and race his way in and get around him. But Brooks is too far back there in the cell tower. We've only maybe seen one or two more passing chances in the rest of the last lap because they don't have enough speed with most of these guys' gear ratios this year to get by them on the start-finish line straight. you got to go either here in the green corner or in the scoreboard corner coming up. They're battling in front of them as David Barnes goes back around Reagan. That's not for the transfer. Now he's defending that spot. 
I don't know. The invader might not get in there of uh, Brooks Anderlein. Meanwhile, at the front for the lead and the win, Tyler Ruth, Eli Fox will cross the line here as they round the back hairpin just up the road from these guys. That's the battle for the transfer. It'll be Tyler Ruth getting around Eli Fox. He'll win the LCQ. Fox second. Everybody else is through. And here's the bubble spot to the line. You counted him. You can see him celebrating. Pierre Thompson hangs on and just survives to transfer in. Brooks Anderline, first guy on the outside looking in. Oh, man, was so close. Two tenths the difference at the line of whether or not uh, Brooks Anderline was going through to line up on the grid for the main event in 60th. But that final spot, unofficially, although so far no penalty shown, no black and checkered, but outside of anything in tech, Pierre Thompson is the last one to get in to the senior light final. Reagan Seville charges his way through, gets in at 59th. David Barnes, 24 spots picked up for the Canadian. What a run. Quentin Murdoch in seventh. Drew Zuck picks up 14 to get to uh, six. Will Lawler drove it all the way up into the top five. 18 spots picked up for him behind David Baker, Jackson Barr, and Eli Fox. And that was intense, but that was only the first one. And We've still got more LCQs to go. Two more because, LCQs. Yeah, two more LCQs coming our way. We have juniors and, of course, the senior mediums that will be getting set to roll here uh, in just a few moments. What a great start to the morning, though, here, Dave Mack. And I tell you what, my question was answered by the celebration, 10th place coming across the start-finish line. Yes, you knew exactly where he was. Apparently. He was keeping yeah, track. Yeah, yeah, he was definitely so. counting them, knowing exactly how, okay, I can let this guy go, but now i got to hold on and hold my position. And it got close, but, you know, hey, kudos to Brooks Anderline. He didn't Boy. crash him out, didn't do any bonsai move. Tried to race him clean all the way to the end. In fact, Brooks even let Reagan by to get back in line. So a lot of respect being shown at least up on the top half of the LCQs. We didn't see all the carnage back behind it, further back in the field that were going for broke, knowing they may not make it. But that was, in my opinion, one of the cleaner last chance qualifiers I've seen on the course of this year. I absolutely agree. One of yeah. the cleanest races of all that we've had all weekend. So yeah. Really, it was. Yeah, no flips, no red flags, no big crashes in turn one. For the most part, it was a, a pretty uh, pretty tame race, and that was a breath of fresh air because situation Saturday got a little bit situational, even all yes. the way into that final race of the day with not one but two red flags and nasty crashes. Now, we were talking many times yesterday about tires. How are tires going to hold up? And especially when the track gets hot. It's cold right now. It's morning yet. It's relatively cool out. It's going to get hotter, and I'm wondering, did anybody wear out their tires already? It's a good question. You know. It's a good question. We've been talking about it all weekend, that these Vega tires we're running, it is a softer compound of the majority of tires used in the U.S. It's not the softest they produce, not a, you know, a super soft tire, if you will, but there is some degradation. And, uh, you know, for guys that are having to drive up the field, break deeper or, or you know, not even break, and that's where from P.J. Lida and just full throttle it into the corner, drive it harder to pass guys, might have worked them a little bit harder. Uh, of course, an old school trick is taking those tires off in the morning, flipping them, and uh, or even in between sessions to try and even the wear out but you know the thing about doing that Dave is you know even though in theory you, you flip it so you're working the equal sides of the tire and they're kind of balanced well they wear in and you kind of get a good groove in them almost of where the wear pattern is and then you flip them and you've got to spend the first few laps kind of re-grooving them almost. I yep. mean, not cutting into the tire, but just the way they wear. So doing that is always a little bit risky if you don't have a session to kind of scuff them. And, and again, we're talking about tire wear, so you don't want to put any extra laps in warm-up just to groove them in if you don't have to race your race tires in warm-up. So it'll be interesting to see if that plays a factor. I don't know how much it really will, um, but... Again, never say never. We might see some guys really fall off the face of the earth lap time-wise at the end uh, of uh, the main events uh, later this afternoon because, again, they're double the heat race distance, 16 laps uh, for the mains. Here's your junior last chance qualifier lineup, by the way, folks, as they've rolled onto the racetrack. Reagan Kerr and Clay O'Brien will make up row number one. Jack Blommer and Logan Hickman on row number two. Indy Anderson and Thomas Anthony on row three. Liam Plate and Zach Henry on row four. Javier Soto and Cole Morgan. The final two drivers as of right now that would transfer in. They start ninth and 10th, those last two spots to get in. Elijah Firesign uh, is the first driver on the outside looking in here to start this one. So is Peyton Worm on row number six. Robert Arana and Caleb Jarvis, Kami, uh, will make up row seven. Raider Santos and Benjamin Safar, Drew Warner and Jeremy Heath, Leland Anderson and Trevor King, your top 20. Dylan Davidson, Bryce Durney, Maddox Hooper, 
Cammy Feister, Gage Shipley, Massimo Sinceri, and Hunter Patterson. They complete the grid of 27 guys. So unfortunately, 17 of these juniors will not get to uh, line up on the grid and say that they were a part of Grand National Championship main event Sunday. But at least they got to make it this far, and hopefully they have a chance here. They've got 10 laps to try and drive forward. We saw those drives, of course, in that last race from even further back than 27th for the likes of Will Lawler, David Barnes, and Reagan Seville. They came from the 30s. So it's possible to uh, make your way all the way up to the front, but it's going to be tricky. You're going to have to be perfect from start to finish. Ten laps. Jason Burgess get us underway as they head down to turn number one. A good start for Reagan Kerr. And oh, no. Oh, no. Second place spins. A number of them spin. The 24 of Clay O'Brien, who started on the front row, gets spun around in turn number one off the start. And now he's way back. And this completely changes the dynamic. All of a sudden, we lost a number of drivers in the top 10 in the first corner, and their chances just got a whole lot slimmer. There's another spin on the opening lap. These junior drivers not used to the lower grip here this morning. That was, I believe, the uh, maybe the 217 of Logan Hickman. So I don't know who we just lost there in the Beer Alert, but uh, we just lost another one as out of the cell tower hairpin and coming up and over the hill. It is a four driver breakaway, another four, and then this big scrum Somewhere in there is 10th place here on the opening lap, and they all know it. They're going to be fighting hard as out in front. At least it was safe for Reagan Kerr. Kerr leads side-by-side side for second. That's the 55 losing the spot. No, that's Kerr in the 55. Sorry, Kerr back to third. My apologies. These are some of the drivers, of course, that were a little further back this weekend, so we're not fully uh, familiar with everyone. Is there's a dragon rear bumper on the 359? Is that right? I can't. No, it it's just like a number David plate. Just a number plate. Yeah, he's okay. All right, my mistake. That's yeah. the, the three... Uh, Looked like 359 of Elijah Firesign. What a start it would be if Elijah is all the way up into uh, the top five there. So let, let's see. Well, the big wreck right at the start, uh, probably at least half of them were in the top ten. So there's a huge change up in, in uh, your potential here. It Those was a 317, my mistake, a Thomas Anthony. So it's Jack Blommer that leads us over Indy Anderson, Reagan Kerr. Here's a look towards the bubble position uh, with the likes of Cole Morgan, Javier Soto, uh, Maddox Hopper is up 12 spots in the 1-0. Nine, oh no! Another uh, drop in a tire. Little mistake for the 0-19 of Maddox. And just like that, Maddox now drops back two positions. Goes back to 12. So this is 10th on back to about 15th right here on your screen. Moving forward, Dylan Davidson and Gage Chipley. And Davidson now gets into the transfer just off that one mistake from the 19 New Gen Motorsport entry of Maddox, uh, Maddox Hooper. Maddox was uh, 22nd on the starting lineup. Picked up 12 spots in that first lap. He's now on the cusp of getting in, but that mistake's now put him back on the outside looking uh, in. So let's go down here side by side while uh, we continue to race in Junior's uh, last chance qualifier. The action continues here. The action also continues down on pit lane as Reagan Seville, the last driver to transfer in, is standing by with our very own David Land. Apologies about that there as we get underway. Uh, just a little hiccup there, but we'll get a, a quick interview with Reagan here in a few moments. Uh, nonetheless, we stay green here for the Junior Last Chance Qualifier and continue to watch uh, here as the field works its way around. That is, again, uh, Maddox Hooper in the 019 trying to get back into the show as uh, they head over to the horseshoe and down the front stretch. Still a lot of time left here in this one. Coming just to put three laps in the books. Indy Anderson's taking over the lead. Jack Blommer second. Thomas Anthony third, although I believe uh, uh, Thomas Anthony looking a little quicker. He closes up. Reagan Kerr fourth. Zach Henry fifth. Raider Santos up eight spots there in six. Cole Morgan seventh. Javier Soto eighth. Gage Shipley and Dylan Davidson are in the show in ninth and tenth as uh, they head through Maddox Hooper. 11th currently as uh, they head out of the right-hander and onto the front straightaway. So down to turn number five we go with uh, three complete so far, seven laps remaining. Your leader still Indy Anderson, the battle further back. 
kind of spreading apart uh, because, again, Maddox Hooper is now a few tenths away from Dylan Davidson. There it is. Dylan Davidson on that blue and yellow Lando Norris cart in the 0-10 is up 10 spots on the last transfer right now, the 19. New Gen Motorsport Machine wants that transfer spot. Going into the green corner, the all-white car. Let's see, was he able to get by? He was. So move Maddox back on into the show as they go in. And now side by side, they both know this is for the transfer. Maddox is off. And oh no, Maddox Hooper spins around. Coming out of the green turn. Just got his way back up into the 10th spot for the second time. And I don't know if he'll be able to come back from that one spinning off the side of the racetrack, Dave Max. Super unfortunate to see. He was having such a great day going. Yeah, earlier when uh, we were trying to go down to the pits at number 359, Elijah got the meatball flag. He was running six. He got uh, sent off the track. He exited early. Oh, another one a little bit wide there. That was the 0-10 LN cart of uh, Dylan, da or Dylan Davidson because Liam Plate got by on the front straightaway. Cami Feister just went by as well. Leland Anderson's there. Cami Feister started 25th. Cami is up now 13 spots, nearly 14. So what a, or actually now 14, I think, at least to 11th or so as Dylan Davidson falls out of the running. So what a battle. What a run. It continues. And a good morning as well to Tony the Toe Cirillo, who joins us up here in the booth. A little, little sleepy this morning, Tony. We <laughs> no, missed you there no, to yeah, start this I, one. I don't have a car, so I have to take the ride. That gets me here. And this is what time I got here. But great to be, hear you guys and, and great racing going on here for the LCQ. Yeah. And as we always tell the racers, the guys out in front, when you're out there in front, you know you're locked into the LCQ. Don't be looking to bump the guy or push the guy out. Make the main. Don't get into it with somebody. Don't spin out at this point. If you're fighting for the bubble, that's a whole nother story. That is a whole nother story. If you're on the bubble, yes, you got to get in there. And, and so you got to do what you got to do. But when you're up front, just, just play it cool. Get to the main. And as we've been telling a lot of people here this weekend, it's been so many cards, so much competition that if you're new and your first time running the Grand National, if you make the main, you got to feel good. And everybody else, whether you don't make the main or not, believe me, you picked up a lot of knowledge by watching these top people drive here and what they do to change things, to set up. So we'll see how these conditions change during the day, but we'll get through these LCQs first. And, and so far, they've been pretty good, Dave. Say, Tony, as a, as a cart parent and a cart grandparent, <laughs> how much uh, signaling do you give your driver on the track? Well, you know, it depends. Some drivers get so focused that they you, you're giving them signals, but they're not right. seeing them. <laughs> yeah. Especially in this LCQ. Eh? During it, it, a regular race, the right. drivers can see how many are ahead of them. You know, mo I know what a lot of people will do prior, just right before they go out, say to their driver, listen, I'm going to be over here. Watch me. You know, okay. I'm going to give you a sign, and especially in an LCQ. If they're, they're one spot off or they're on the bubble, they're going to, you know, make that sign and say, you got to keep it, keep it there or you got to make up some posi positions. But some drivers, it's just very hard for them to focus anywhere but what's right in front of them. Sure. So, uh, you know, we don't allow radios in the helmets and stuff like that. But there are a lot of people that have worked out signs with their driver. Okay, and that's very, very important. The driver needs, especially, like I say, in the LCQ, the driver needs to know where they are on the track, especially in that bubble position. Oh, yeah, especially in that bubble position because that's what I'm saying. That's where you you got to give it, you know, you got to throw it all to the wind when you're in that bubble yeah. position. Do what you got to do. But if you're in the top eight, top seven, just play it cool. I mean, if you could take a position, take a position. But don't go crazy to don't take that it. position. Yeah. Don't push it. Don't lose it because you've made the main. You're, you're in the main. So uh, hopefully there are signs that their people tell their driver, all right, just, just stay where you are. Calm down, stay, keep a steady pace, and, and stay there. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. So the bubble is 10th, right? Yep. I mean, tenth, they're taking the top 10. Top the bubble, 10. You're the bubble is 11, or 10 and 11, yeah. really. <laughs> so currently 285, Liam Plate is in 10th place. And right. number 351, Cammy Feaster is in 11th. 11th. So Cammy's out right now. Liam is in. But that could change. Right. That could We've change. Got, uh, I and think we're going to be three laps to go next time. Right. So, and that's, that's what could happen. That could change, especially if the top drivers get into it. Well, and they, they <laughs> could drop a tire off the right-hand right. side, and we've seen it happen many times today. You could drop back two spots, or you could spin. If you spin, they're going to take out at least two carts, and then, you know, right. 11 and 12 are all of a sudden made the field. Right. So we got the number 184 of Jack Bloomer, right? He's in the lead. Indy Anderson in second. Thomas Anthony in third. Zach Henry in fourth. Reagan Kerr in fifth. Cade Shipley in sixth. Cole Morgan in seventh. Javier Soto in eighth. Liam Plate in ninth. 
Raider Santos. He is on the bubble. He's in tent, but he's, he, 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 he's on the bubble, and he is in tenth. He's got to watch it. He's come up four spots. Leyland Anderson, who's in 11th, who's trying to get on the bubble, came up seven spots. But look yep. at Cammy Fister, but up 13 spots in 12th. Not good enough yet. So not good enough. But he's but those three drivers, I mean those two drivers, Leyland Anderson, Cammy Fister, and Jeremy, Jeremy Heath. I'm gonna say cart number six. Uh, cart number, yes, yeah, six is... Cart number 428. Oh, I'm sorry. Cart number 428 yep. is up six positions. That's what there I want to say. Yep, yep, yep. And he, all of those drivers got a shot. Anderson, Fister, Heath, and maybe Aranda. It just matters what happens here. So let's get back and see where we are with, with the bubble drivers. Once again, you know, your leaders, as long as... Two laps to go. Uh, Jason Sigling, two laps to go. And yes, pe uh, people are moving around. Javier Soto, number 95, is currently in 10th. Cami Feaster is outside. Number 351, Cami Feaster is 11th. So she's outside. The top 10, once again, are going to make the field. Everybody else is going home early. So uh, I don't see any major action out there right now. I mean, as far as there, there's a little bit going on there, let's pick up their numbers. No, me personally, if I was <laughs> one through nine, I would stay right here and don't, right. well, don't make uh, any <laughs> mistakes. You know, racers will be racers. Yeah, you know, they're going to race to the end. And, and, you know, that's why I say sometimes their pit crew has to tell them, hey, yeah, I know that you want to get every position you can get, but let's make the main first. Yep. You know, let's get into the main. Yeah, calm so down. Uh, calm down. Don't lose it. And these are juniors. They're a little bit younger yeah. kids. They're not full adults yet. They're, you know, a little bit younger. And they, they've got, uh, you know, they're full of, you, you know moment? what, and vinegar. So we're looking for number 351 is Cami Fister right on the bubble. Number 95, Javier Soto is in 10th. White flag is out. Remember, Javier Soto is where the bubble is, the 10th place. They're in, there, they're in the main. And we're looking for Cami Fister in the 351 to see how close. Okay. Yeah, and they just went by. They did take the white flag. There's one lap to go, and, so that's going to be the battle. And you see some racing going on here, trying to get up there, trying to those top, those three, Santos, I mean, yeah, Santos, Morgan, and Heath, trying to do battle. They know they're right near the, the, the edge. Uh, but the, Did Cammy just take it? Oh, I did something. Okay, we got somebody out. I'm not sure is if that, that was Javier somebody. Javier, that is. Okay, Cami Feaster just so uh, made the field. If Javier's out or spun out, yep. that's going to allow Cami Fist. Uh, well, Cami Fister is in. Radar, Radar Santos might be now entering that top ten. Yeah, and Cami Feaster's raced with us for years and years, yep. and I know she is aggressive. So hopefully there was nothing there, and I don't see any black flags. So I'm sure that was a good clean pass. Yep. So we'll, we'll pick that up. They'll be coming to the checkered flag now. And this is where the race is for the bubble. Cami Fister in the number 351 trying to hold on with the 363 of Radar Santos in 11th. And the number 03 of Cole Morgan. Any one of those three, two uh, trying to get into the top 10 so they can brace the feature? Let's see. Look at this. It's going to be a side-by-side. -side. Yeah, all the black flag is, is out. out. Black yeah. is out, but uh, we got our top 10. And it was Cole Morgan who made the top 10. Cammie Fister was ninth, so she was in there. She got in there, no problem. But it was Cole Morgan in the 0-3. That's where the top 10 end. I'll give it to you from the top. Indy Anderson, of course, won the race. Jack Bloomer in second. Thomas Anthony in third. Reagan Kerr in fourth. Zach Henry in fifth. Liam Plate in sixth. Cage Shipley in seventh. I, Leyland Anderson in eighth. And Cammie Fister in ninth. And making the top 10, making the big show is... Cole Morgan in the 0-3. Cole Morgan has made the big show. Those are your top 10 in junior. They'll proceed to the uh, features here today. But there was a black flag out. I don't know if that will change anything in the top 10. It just might switch a position. It might not open up a position. But right now, unofficially, those are your top 10 that will go to the show. Okay, so we're going to take a commercial break right now, and we'd like to thank Car Chaser for sponsoring this, I mean, for supplying this coverage for this Grand National here at Newcastle Motorsport Park. 
Are you a racing enthusiast? Drive Your Line is the Mid-South's only full-service kart shop. We make dreams a reality for those five years old and up. All racers start in karting, and we're the purveyors of fun for the whole family. Karting the Coast is presented by Drive Your Line Kart Shop and is the premier race series on the Gulf Coast and brings racing to Biloxi at Finish Line Performance Karting and at the world-renowned NOLA Motorsports Park. Call us at 601-667-0770 or find us at driveyourline.com. Also on Facebook or Instagram. got it. At Cart Eat Parts, we are your complete online aftermarket cart part superstore. From chains to bearings to bumpers and components, we've got it in stock and ready to ship straight to your door from our base in Ontario, Canada. Check us out online at carteparts.ca. Are you a racing in Okay, we're back. Uh, here we are at uh Cup Cards North America Grand National 7. This is a senior medium class coming out right now. Hey, real quick, before this race starts, quick sign up for Cart Chaser so you can watch it all day and all month. It's a one-month subscription. I don't know if they have a one-year subscription or not, but anyway, sign up for the month for sure. So quick sign up right now because we are free right now, but during the main events, it will be behind, I think they've called it behind right. the wall. Behind, behind the wall. We'll behind be behind the wall, the wall yeah. at, <laughs> at, at right after this event, basically. I think we go pretty much behind the wall and it's a $9.99 subscription, and you'll get it for the whole month, and you'll be able to watch a lot of these things back. If you missed anything over the past three days, they'll, they'll be up there on their website, and you'll have the ability to do that. And it's not just us. They have all kinds oh, of programming yeah. they, and they, cart they, they have covered a, a huge amount of cart racing. So if you're into cart racing, you want to see what goes on. We're green. Is the green out? Green's out. So now this is a very big one, senior medium. Their LCQ with P.J. Lida on the pole. Dylan Amston in second. Ben Lida uh, in the third row. William Wallace in fourth row. In fourth. In fifth, it's Brennan Hanville. In sixth, Simon Hansen. In seventh, P.J. McDougan. McDonough? McDonough. In eighth, it's 91 of Jack Duval. We got a couple out already. I mean, you know, it's going to be rough here. In tenth, in ninth, it's Bryce Frank. In tenth, Peyton Polarek. So those are your top 10. Bryce Dickman is in 11. Caitlin Brown is in 12th. Raphael Kraus in 13th. Brandon Herber in 14th. Nathan Heath in 15th. Dylan Jan Jans in 16th. We'll pick up the action now. Let's see what's happening out there. Right now, uh, we'll see who, who your leaders are and who your top 10 are so we can keep track of the top 10 because those are the top 10 that are going to move on to your features. I see back in 19th place, number 391, Franco Savalio. Franco Savalio was our 500th entry at uh, Cup Cars North America Grand Nationals, so we appreciate Franco putting us over that 500 mark. Betsy Gallagher back in 20th, Max Trammell, Owen Mealy, Chloe McKenzie, and so on. But remember, the all-important spot is 10th and 11th. Right. Number 613, Bryce Frank is currently in 10th, and number 418, Eli Fox is currently 11th. Eli Fox would be out. I doubt Eli Fox isn't going to make the feature, so... Eli Fox is uh, traditionally very fast, so I think Eli Fox will pick up a spot or two. So far, he's up six spots. Right. Eli Fox, definitely a fast driver. Not sure anything could have happened to these drivers. Some of your top drivers are in this 
LCQ because they either they broke down or they got caught up in an accident, something happened, and that put them in this LCQ. Does not mean they're not good, fast drivers. There's a lot of fast drivers out there. And the competition is so tough. I mean, we're talking thousands of a second, Dave, yeah. separating one cart from another when we looked at the time trials. So it is, it is really tough. This is the Grand National. This is the best four cycles in the country. Right now, Bryce Frank in the number 613, sitting on 10. He's got to hold on. Eli Fox, definitely already up six positions. He's a guy to watch. Number 418, Eli Fox. Kalen Brown, don't count Kalen out, number 372 in 12th. Nathan Heath in 13th. Bryce Dickman in 14th. Brandon Herber in 15th. Raphael Kraus. All right, we got somebody, Bryce Frank is now in 10th. Eli Fox still trying to hold on, did not get by him. Eli did turn purple that time, too, yep. by the way, which uh, means he yeah. just ran the yeah. fastest right. lap of the entire race so far. That's what I'm saying. Number 418, Eli Fox is fast, but he might be playing it cool. He doesn't want to get into an accident. He wants to, he'll get into the top 10. He wants to do it right, smooth, and clean so he doesn't get knocked out. And you see drivers out there fighting positions. I don't blame those drivers from 10th place back trying to fight for position because that's what it's all about. Guys up front, the drivers up front should be just driving a clean race, following the guy in front of you, unless that person's really holding you up. Or try to make a cl uh, clean pass. Do not get caught up. Don't get off the track at this point. You're in the top ten. You're making the big show. And I'm pretty sure... And I'm pretty sure Eli Fox just made the field. I think Eli Fox just passed uh, Bryce Frank, and Eli Fox, I think, is in the top ten. All right, we'll pick it up. So Bryce Pr Frank, number 613, was your ten spot. The 418 of Eli Fox was 11. You got the 647 of Nathan Heath in 12th, and Bryce Dickman in the number 630. Look at this lineup coming down the straightaway. And they're playing it pretty clean right now. They're keeping it, they're keeping it civil, as I'll say. They're not trying to take each other out. And now your top ten is Eli Fox. Fox has has made the top 10, but on the on the bubble is Bryce Frank, and he's down two positions. You got Bryce Dickman coming up. Maybe he could do it. Nathan Heath, keep an eye on Nathan. Nathan in the 647 is in 13. So you're going to see some racing back there. And look, uh, look at Desi Pendergron, up 10 spots, but back in 19th. Can Desi can make the move up to get in the top 10? That's Eli Fox uh, just moving up, moving through the field. Uh, number 418, Eli Fox doing a wonderful job. He made the field a couple laps back, and he's still passing people. He might want to finish fifth, fourth, third, something like that. Well, yeah, I mean, we know Eli Fox is fast. He turned purple already in this race, so he is a fast driver. But like I said, he's got to do it clean. He, he, oh, he, he doesn't want to get knocked out at this point, and he really shouldn't take anybody out, hopefully. So we'll see where that goes when they come across the line. But we're looking at that bubble. It was Eli Fox on the bubble. I believe he has moved up. He is no longer on the bubble. We'll see who has made the, uh, who is now, uh, has he pushed back down that, that top ten. And you'll still see passing going on. And there it is. Peyton Polarek in the 513 is on the bubble. Bryce Frank has moved up into the top ten. Jacob Duval. Ben Lida, and look at Eli Fox all the way six. up to six. But right now, your bubble is the 513 of Peyton Pol Polarek. And in 11th is P.J. McDuggan. And that's the 132. Bryce Dickman, 630, is in 12th. Nathan Heat, 647, is in 13th. So we'll see what happens here. But right now, on the bubble is the 513 of Peyton Polarek. And Polarek has gotten pushed back. He's on, in, on the bubble. He's got to be careful. He's got to try to put some space between him and the number 132 of uh, P.J. McDuggan. And two of the four Lida brothers are uh, in the top ten here right now. The 09 of P.J. Lida is in second place. And the uh, 991 of Ben Lida in seventh place. So two of the four that are entered that are racing this weekend are in the top ten. Okay. So your tenth place driver is number 513, Peyton Polarek. He is your 10th place driver on the bubble, but is in the big show right now. The 132 of P.J. McDuggan, he's 11th. And in 12th is the 130, I'm sorry, in, in 12th is the 630 of Bryce Dickman. Now, Bryce Frank had made it up. He's up in 8th place. Ben Leiter in 9th. Peyton Polarek in 10th. That's where the bubble is. Look at Eli Fox up to 5th place. He yeah. was out of the field earlier. Yeah. He's all the way up to 5th place, and he did turn. He's got the purple lap. He is, he is fast. We knew that, so he made the top 10. Right now, 
who's going to be in the top 10. It's the 513 of Peyton Polarek. Pa Peyton Polarek trying to hold on to that 10th spot. He's got the 132 of P.J. McDuggan in 11th. Right behind him, the 630 of Bryce Dickman in 12th. Nathan Heat in the 647 in 13th. And in 14th, uh, there's Brandon Herba in the number 8. Any one of those drivers can maybe make it up, but we'll see what happens here. And I see Jason Burgess does have the sportsman flag in hand and his uh -oh. sign, so somebody's going to get scolded here. Somebody's going to get uh, a penalty. It might not open up the top ten unless it's a, a, a flag for the tenth place driver, which is Peyton Polarek. Polarek holding on. He's in on, in tenth place, number 513. Peyton Polarek in tenth. In 11th is the 132 of McDuggan. Can McDuggan get in there? There's the sportsman flag, and we'll see. I see some drivers holding up their hand. The top 10 look pretty clean. They're coming through pretty clean. It's the 10th spot now. P.J. McDuggan, he has made it up into the top 10. Cart number 132, P.J. McDuggan in 10th. It's Bryce Dickman. Oh, McDonough? McDonough. McDonough. I'm sorry, there that's P.J. McDonough. And the 132 has made the show right now. He's in 10th spot. The 132 of P.J. McDonough, he has made the show. Oh, we got somebody off the track. Oh, mm. tough break for Bryce Frank. That's going to open place. up a spot. So now I'd say Bryce Dickman probably in the show. Bryce Dickman might have moved up. He should have moved up in the number 630. He moved up. P.J. McDuggan. McDonough in, in, should be up in ninth. Bryce Dickman, I think, in tenth. And Brandon Herber in the number eight now is the person that's trying to get into the big show. The number eight of Brandon Herber, I believe. So we'll pick that up. Or right now, I believe Bryce Dickman has made the show. Cart number 630 is in tenth. So we're definitely going to have some good racing going on in the back there because they're trying to make the big show here. This is the last LCQ of the day. We'll get on with the features later on. Remember, if you're watching Car Chasers and you want to see the rest of this, you want to hear Dave, you want to hear Tony the Toe and Xander, we're going to be on, but it's going to be a, a fee. So t check it out now. Sign up and get on to see the features because I'm telling you, it's going to be a big race here today. The features are really big. Right now in 10. It's the 6.30 of Bryce Dickman. Cart number 6.30 is on the, on the bubble. Brandon Herber in the 8 has a shot. Can he get into the big show? The number 8 of Brandon Herber, I'm sure they are giving him signs on the side, saying you got only one more shot to go. So Brandon Herber is right there in 11 with the number 647 of Nathan Heath and the number 991 of Ben Lida. Ben Lida is right there in 13th. So any one of those, Herba, Heath, or Lida, have a shot to maybe get into the big show. You never know what could happen in the top 10. But right now, holding on to the 10th spot is the number 630 of Bryce Dickman, the number 6. And you see the number 8 out there. That's Brandon Herba. He's in 11th. And I'm sure he's getting a the sign. They're like, can you pick it up a little more? Can you get a little bit more? Can you catch up? Get in on the draft. Here it is, the top 10 right now, holding on to 10th place, Bryce Dickman in the 630. And they're getting the two flags, two flags, which means two laps remaining, two laps remaining. So it's coming down to the last two laps. There's your number eight driver, number eight. He's got a shot to get in there. That is Brandon Herber, number eight. Brandon Herber, can he pick it up a little bit? You got the 647 of Nathan Heath in 12th. Maybe he'll start pushing. They got to try to get into the big show. There's only two laps remaining. We'll see what happens right now. The number 630 of Bryce Dickman sits on the bubble. He's in 10. We're looking at the number 8 because he is an 11, and we'll see how close he is to possibly getting into the top 10. I think he's got a little bit of a ways to go, so uh, it might be tough unless somebody up in the top 10 messes up, falls off the track. That'll open up a slot. But if everybody just takes it clean, you see that number eight? He is definitely pushing it. He's trying to get into that draft. If he can get into that, oh, he hits a curve there. That might have cost him a little bit. But if he can get into that draft, he's got a shot. Brandon Herber in the number eight, driving his, he's driving hard. He's trying to get in there. So we're going to get, you see Brandon jump and getting down out of the air. The white flag is out. Brandon could, can feel it. He can feel he can pull him in. Can he do it? Can he, look at this, coming into turn one. Brandon Brandon doing an excellent job trying to catch up. He is the number eight. Brandon Herbert is on the bubble. Can he get up there? And hopefully the other top ten drivers do not mix it up and open up a slot. 
Herbert's trying everything he can. He's trying to get a run. He's taking all the track he can get, trying to get his feet, not to scrub it off, but to roll. And he's doing a good job. Let me tell you, Brandon Herbert has closed the gap. So we got a race for 10th. Here it is. Herbert's right on the back bumper. Wow, Herbert, I got to give this guy credit. He closed the gap. And he's right there, and let's see what happens. He is now making, trying to make the pass. He's going in, and he does it, I believe. Brandon Herbert gets in there. So Brandon Herbert makes the pack, I think. We'll have to pick it up. Herbert's still trying to hold on as he's being hard-pressed. They're going to be coming down to the checkered flag. What a job by Brandon Herbert. He's doing an excellent job out here. You got to give this guy credit. He was on the bubble, but he was a ways back there. He wasn't in the draft. We got the black flag and the check it out again. So we'll see what happens. But I think Brandon Herbert made it. Here he comes. What a drive. And he's and and going three. There's, the there's a battle at the end. <laughs> and he took it. All right. So let's pick it up. Herbert actually finished ninth. Simon Hansen. And Simon Hansen got in there at the last minute. Bryce Dickman just missed it. Number 630, he was in 11th. Let me give you the top 10. It's Dylan Amston. It's Brendan Man, Br Br uh, Brennan Hanville, PJ Lida, William Wallace, Eli Fox got up to 5th, Jacob Duval in 6th, Peyton Polarak in 7th, PJ McDuggan in 8th, Brandon Herba in ninth, and Simon Hansen in your top 10. Wow. Tough break for Bryce Dickman. He just missed it. So Simon Hansen didn't make the field. Simon Hansen lost 4 spots. But did make the field right at the very yeah. end. So congratulations, yep. Simon Hansen. Yeah. Wow, what a run by, um, well, everybody. But uh, P.J. McDonough and, and uh, Eli Fox, man, picked up 12 spots, started way back and just picked his way through the field until he got up there. Two Lida brothers. Um, did they both make it? Let's see, P.J.? No, I don't think so. Oh, no, nope, you're right. Just yep. P.J. made it. So unfortunately, yeah, Ben is back in 13th place. Desi Pedregon climbed 15 spots. Desi, 15 spots, did not make the field. Finished <laughs> nah, 14th. How tough unfortunate. break. Tough break. Desi, I know, is a local here. He's got a garage right down below us somewhere. So, unfortunately, Desi is done for the, the weekend. Um, Franco Savalio, that was our 500th entry this weekend. Moved up three spots to 16th. So, congratulations to everybody that made the field. And I'm very sorry for everybody that didn't. Well, I'm looking back here. One of my locals, Betsy Yelger, finished 21st. Um... <laughs> So everybody who made it, way to go. Congratulations. Um, and just remember now, these people are going to start in the back of the main event. So um, stick with us. Hey, make sure you subscribe right now to Cart Chaser. and You can watch us all month. And I think we're going to go to commercial. Eating the pre-final or just getting started, BriggsRacingGear.com is the only place for official Briggs Racing swag. Place an order of at least $25 by October 15th and you'll receive a free gift. BriggsRacingGear.com Here at MPG Motorsports, our main goal is to provide the best pathway into professional motorsports for our entire team, drivers and mechanics alike. based out of Whiteland Raceway Park in Indiana. For more information, contact us at chase at mpg-motorsports.com. At Precision Performance Karting and Brandon Jarthacrack Racing, developing winners is what we do. We're a complete karting program with support, driver coaching, parts, and arrive and drive packages at all levels. Trackhouse Motorplex Karting Challenge, Club Races, the CKNA South Division, the CKNA Majors, and a complete in-house ladder program with the BJR to move from 206 club racing to the highest levels of KA and X30 competition in the U.S. If you're ready to learn from industry veteran John Seglem and multi-time U.S. Pro Kart Series champion Brandon Jarzakrat, head over to ppkartingfl.com and contact us today. Are you a racing enthusiast? Drive Your Line is the Mid-South's only full-service kart shop. We make dreams a reality for those five years old and up. All racers start in karting, and we're the purveyors of fun for the whole family. Karting the Coast is presented by Drive Your Line Kart Shop and is the premier race series on the Gulf Coast and brings racing to Biloxi at Finish Line Performance Karting and at the world-renowned NOLA Motorsports Park. Call us at 601-667-0770 or find us at driveyourline.com. Also on Facebook or or Instagram. Hi, my name is Brandon from Brandon Jarts Crack Racing slash Precision Performance Karting. I'm driving the 138 in Senior Light and Senior Medium. Here's the rest of our driver lineup. 
Rob Howden, the driver of the number 37 in Legends and Masters from Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. Kay Yeager, number 64 in Junior, hometown Kewaskum, Wisconsin. Chris Carroll, car 12, running Senior Heavy and Masters. Hometown is uh, Charleston, South Carolina. I'm Christopher McEthan, driver of the 19 in Senior Light and Senior, senior Medium from Gastonia, North Carolina. I'm James Overbeck, driver of the 48 in Senior Light and Senior Medium. I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. Paulie Massimino, number 40, Senior Light, Senior Medium, hometown, Chris Knockman, North Carolina. You need it, we got it. At Cart Eat Parts, we are your complete online aftermarket cart part superstore. From chains to bearings to bumpers and components, we've got it in stock and ready to ship straight to your door from our base in Ontario, Canada. Check us out online at carteparts.ca. If you're a do-it-yourself 206 racer, then LawsonSpeedShop.com needs to be in your favorite bar. Along with building rocket ship engines, we keep a full stock of everything that the privateer racer needs to get out on track and win. Visit our website at LawsonSpeedShops.com for more. All right, here we are back online. This is uh, Cup Carts North America Grand National 7 brought to you by Cart Chaser. Hey, this would be a real good time before the race starts to sign up for Cart Chaser for the month. You can get all the action today. The main events are going to be behind the wall, they refer to it as. You have to buy a subscription. It's real inexpensive. It's just $9.99 for the entire month. They've got all kinds of uh, entertainment for the whole month, so I would suggest you do it right now. Just uh, go buy your Cart Chaser subscription. And then you get to watch all of today's events. Right. And uh, right now, it's still Car Chaser, still uh, live streaming. You can still see Car Chaser. Right now, you're seeing the warm-ups of the, f the nine classes, I believe, that are going to run for their feature. So they're warming up. So you can see them out there. But once again, we'd like to thank Car Chaser for providing such coverage. The camera work is unbelievable. The interviewing and everything. These, these drivers deserve it. These competitors deserve it. They've worked hard. They spent a lot of money to get here. And they deserve to get recognized by the rest of the world. Anybody out there that can live stream this, you can watch it right now. But it will end after the warm-ups. And you will have to pay that subscription fee. But you'll be good for the whole month. And you can go back and watch whatever you want to watch. It'll all be out there. And we, once again, like to thank Car Chaser. And once again, we'd like to thank the sponsors of the CKNA because they have just supported this series and making it what it is. And, of course, a big shout-out to Briggs & Stratton themselves for developing this 206 program to making a, a place for, a, we'll call it grassroots, where a lot of the local clubs should think about running a 206 program. But a lot have already done that, and that's what has, has fed this series. That's what yep. has fed this series. And now that CKNA has spread its wings, so to speak, it has divisions, that's also building up to this big grand national here. Yeah, so we, we got the North Division, we got the South Division, we got the Canadian Division, and last year, I mean this year for the first time, we have the Northeast Division. So it's just all dedicated to four cycle, all dedicated to this one motor, and, and it makes tech the best tech because they don't have to have a million different things. It's one engine they're teching through every class here from the kid carts all the way up to the seniors. 
So th this is making bracing, and we, we thank Briggs for coming out with all the rules. So uh, once again, we thank Briggs, and, and definitely, I know the races definitely support CKNA. If they want to show who's the best four cycle driver in the country, this is the place to go, Dave. And, and talk about support. Uh, our sponsors are critically important, and I got to talk to the RLV people. Miranda showed up today, so I got to talk to Miranda. I haven't seen her for quite some time. It's always nice to see Miranda from RLV. So. RLV, thank you so much for the sponsorship and every one of our sponsors, but RLV has been with us since day one. And the, every single uh, driver's meeting, they give away massive amounts of door prizes. So thanks, Miranda and, and uh, Art and yeah, your brother and Rod. everybody. Rod, thank you. Rod. Rod. <laughs> I struggled with that name. Thanks, Tony. <laughs> um, yeah, every one of you, I really appreciate your sponsorship, all our sponsors. We got RLV, CVR, Precision, John Siegel and Precision Performance Karting. Briggs, of course, Cam Concepts is on site, Noram. Uh, BRT is um, um, Baron Racing Team. Uh, MDM Chassis, uh, that's um, Axel Rice. Well, and he brought, <laughs> he brought Paul and April along. Yeah, he so, brought uh, Paul, yeah. Paul and April. Uh, EK Car Change, <laughs> Target Distributing, Joe DeBover, Stacey Gunn, uh, Marshall Martin, Max Stork, Part City, uh, CKT, Chicago Karting Technology, Coyote Motorsports, Jim LaPerry is on site. Uh, Vega Tires, of course, Brad and Becky are here. CRG, uh, E-Karting News, uh, TS Racing, Fern Creek, Zamp, NSCW, um, just the list goes on and on and on. So thank you very much. Uh, Jack Wolfskin, when we're up in Canada, all kinds of Canadian sponsors, uh, EVS, uh, Zamp. The Black Circles dot C, I think it's dot CA, um, instrumental in the Canadian uh, division or Canadian region. So thanks, everybody. So the main events later on today, 50 carts made the field, 5-0, 50 carts made the field. These fields are so massive that we could only take the top 50. Now the last chance qualifiers let 10 more in each one, with the exception of senior heavy that would have sent one person home. So we made an exception to the rule and let all 11 that would have uh, been in the LCQ to come in. But uh, senior light, junior, and senior medium all have 10 transferring. So the 50 original plus the 10 will make 60 cart fields in every uh, every every class. Right. So. so we're going to start 60 on the track, which is a record number for me. 60 carts on the track at one time, and we'll see how we can do following those 60 carts. But it's really going to be the top five, I guess, in each 60. That's the, where the awards will go out. I believe is it top five, Dave? I yeah. believe, yeah, yeah, that's correct. Top five, top this five for our so uh, we we kind of move it up to from the top three to the top five due to the fact of all the carts that are here and in a class. Okay, we're getting ready to go down to David Land for an interview, and I'll turn it over to Dave.
Okay, so the legends are out there for their grand finale, grand final warm-ups. The legends are out there. These are the um, oldest class we have, legends. And uh, somebody's getting a scolding from Jason. I'm not quite sure what that was. He had the green flag out, so maybe it was just informational, uh, something on the board. We can't see the board. We're behind Jason, so we can't see what's written on the board. Um, so we usually have to try to just guess. But Jason, by the way, Jason Burgess has his orange and black striped suit on today. He had the orange one on Friday. The black one on Saturday and the orange and black striped one on Sunday. Jason Burgess, oh, he just showed me the sign. I couldn't see it. Anyway, uh, Jason Burgess, the absolute best in the business. He's the infamous Jason Burgess. He does all kinds of series, IndyCar, um, off-road, absolutely everything you can think of. And we are so fortunate to have Jason. And we actually hired him for the Northeast Series. Is he the flag? No, no, North, no, North? no. We use... Uh, Tim Hannon's people. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Tim. Oh, and Tim, by the way, too. Thank you yeah. so much, Tim. So this class is a legends out there right now. Um, this is just a warm-up before the um, actual main events. The main events are grand finals. Grand finale is going to be 16 laps for everybody. And uh, we are going to do a track walk and interview. Right. So a uh, grid walk, I guess, and interview everybody. So I'm looking forward to that. That's my favorite part right. of this whole job. Dave, Once a year, I get to do that. Right. Dave will be down on uh, the grid and actually out on the main track. We bring the drivers out. So we tell the drivers, when you come to the grid for your feature, do not take your carts off, the, off your cart uh, wagon or your cart stand, wheel it up. They'll, they'll let you know when you can wheel it up to the short chute over here in front of the grandstands and everything, and then Dave will get out there and kind of talk to a lot of the people, interview a lot of the people. So right now we got the legends on the track. They're, you know, what I tell the drivers it, it, at this point, this is a warm-up. Don't go out there and get in trouble with somebody. You made the feature. You're going to be in the big show. Keep it all together. Make it to the big show. Do not get bang up, get, get your car damaged. Get out there. Just you're, you're just making sure everything is right. Also, you want to save your tires. We got a 16-lap feature coming up. You want to save everything you can to make it so you're at your best when you get out there for that feature. Yeah. So just take it easy. Don't be looking to, you know, I mean, if you, you have somebody slow in front of you, you want to get by them, but don't do anything dangerous. Try to keep it together. This is what we call a warm-up. It's not even really a practice. It's a warm-up. Yeah. So uh, we're, we're, that's what we're doing now. And, and as far as if anybody's watching this right now, live streaming, this will stop right after the warm-ups. And you can join. You can get the membership at uh, Car Chaser. It's only nine ninety nine to watch the features. And that's for a whole month, by the way. That's not and that, just and that's for the whole, whole month. month. Right. Otherwise, you can watch them later on in the week. Uh, it'll come on free. Hey, I just wanted to say real quick, Tony, um, we've got a lot of racers out here. Uh, karting, and especially four-stroke karting, is considered relatively inexpensive in yeah. the motorsport world. Um, but carters are not afraid to spend major dollars on no. their helmets. They've got some <laughs> yeah. really, really fancy helmets. One of them in particular, and the cameraman was doing a wonderful job. His name is Tim Han, and he's number zero. And his helmet looks exactly like a cheeseburger. It's painted like a cheeseburger. Yep. It's just hilarious. And I'm sure that, that some of the camera people will pick up on that. They had him earlier. There he is right there. Tim yeah. Hannon in the back of this field. But. And Tim Hannon is, is the owner of Oakland Valley Raceway, also owner of Hannon Motorsports. And uh, he does a lot up there in upstate New York. I'm going to call it upstate New York. It's not that far upstate, but for me, I'm downstate. So it's upstate New York. Uh, he has an excellent track there. And uh, that is what was the first race of the Northeast CKNA series. And, and Tim, by the way, is my, I, I mean, uh, he's my ultimate hero. <laughs> he, he, he's got at least two racetracks that I've discovered on his property in his backyard. Oh, yes. Because yes. his house is right in front yeah, of them. Right. You literally drive past his house, house to get into to the get racetrack. In <laughs> and Tim has multiple, multiple race cars. Right. And when we were there, each day he would bring a new one out and put it in the focal point right, right. in front and center there. Um, non-wing sprint cars. Um, he's got what else? Formula he's got car. Yeah, Formula, yeah. Formula Ford, I think, was there. He had the dirt car. Yep, he's got yep. a dirt oval yep. in his, in his yep. backyard, yep. Um, surrounded by fencing. You know, I mean, this yep. is a real professional racetrack. Yep. Now, Oakland Valley is one of our best, and it's one of the original racetracks. It's been there, I believe, since the 60s, but somewhere around in the 70s or 80s, it was re, you know made larger and and brought up to today's standards but it was a small club there i think the club was actually out of pennsylvania that ran their races there many many years ago but it's one of the original car tracks and uh we thank tim hannon for uh 
supporting us and and giving us uh, some of his work as he here today, working the working the track. So yeah, absolutely, uh, I know yep. Melly's here. I know yep. uh, Gideon. I, Gideon. Yeah, I saw a bunch of his people. Uh, so. the, our our main flag person's here with his son Ian. Oh, and, absolutely. Yep, yeah. And they're uh, doing. Uh, they're watching the corners, making sure nobody does anything wrong. And that's the other thing I want to tell drivers. Listen, they, I believe. I've, I've been told by Greg there's 14 people watching, watching this track for violations, not just Absolutely. watching it to see, you know, what's going on. They're watching for violations. So, one, we know the tram lines, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's a big one, but there's other things that could be going on, and I'd hate to see somebody who's, who wins or is clo in the top five, and then they get a penalty and they're taken out. So there's 14 people out there. CKNA has really invested in this series. They're really trying to keep this up to a real professional series. I've been told by people in the pits they've never seen this kind of organization. And so it's been really good. Uh, and, but also, warning to the drivers, please try to keep it clean out there. I don't want to see anybody getting thrown out on a violation or losing a position for a violation. Sure. Hey, uh, anybody on site, anybody locally here, um, can you please check Facebook? There's a lot of unclaimed prizes. Uh, Amy's got a lot of unclaimed prizes, so if you, can you please check Facebook? And anybody at home, you have no idea how many prizes uh, Cup Cards gives away. We just give away a massive amount of stuff every race weekend. Massive. And an <laughs> ultra-massive amount on, on our Grand Nationals weekend. So yep. Amy doesn't want to take your prizes home on the, in her suitcase on the airplane. So can you please check Facebook and go claim your prize from Amy? Yep. So Senior Heavy now is on the track. Senior Heavy is on the track, and they're getting their warm-ups. And it, these are the main classes. The, these are the feature races. It'll be a 16-lap feature, 16 laps. And remember, these drivers have been on the same tire since Friday. They've been on the same tire since Friday. One, a credit to Vega Red tires that they can hold up. And these drivers are turning just as fast lap times as they did on Friday. Some of them even gotten faster over the yeah. weekend. We'll see if that, if the tire thing, I mean, I was kind of picking on the tire thing because saying how could a tire hold up from Friday all the way through Sunday. And then on Sunday you have an 16-lap uh, race. And we've been ra racing eight laps prior. Well, that, that's my thing. That's what I keep dwelling on, Tony, and I'm sorry if I keep. But I can't. I mean, that's one set of tires for the whole weekend. Right. And I, I'm really wondering how somebody's going to wear them out. I guarantee well, somebody's going to wear them out. somebody might wear it out. But you've got to give Vega credit that they, yeah. they've made a tire for this 206 program, and it works. And, and again, I advise clubs and local places that have 206, you just might as well put the Vega Red on your cart. And, and this way, that driver can go any place, I'm going to say almost in the country, to race, and they're legal. They yeah. don't have to worry about, oh, i got to change this, i got to change that. And that's the whole idea of the 206 program. When you talk to our tech people, when they find something that doesn't meet tech, they take it out of circulation. They don't want it going back to the local clubs or the local play drivers so that we're trying to keep it fair for everybody. And it's all about your chassis setup, your tires. And we talk about chassis. we got many of our chassis builders out there. As you mentioned, Jim Lapari's here. I think from, they all are. Oh, yeah. I, but I, I, I can't think of anybody right. missing. Yeah. They're, they're yeah. all here. So I tell the drivers, walk through the pits. You'll, you'll meet people. Yep. You'll see people. If you're thinking about a new cart, you have your major dealers here. You have, but definitely we're going to talk about Coyote and MGM. They're sponsors here. And, and I and always tell everybody, patronize the sponsors yep. because they're the people that know. They're here. And they go to just about every race. So they know what it takes if you want to be a winner in this 206 CKNA series. And to elaborate on that a little bit, you know, if you're at home watching, you don't know anything about karting, this is the place to be. Next year, come to Grand Nationals. We have a multitude of hotels within, I think, Greenfield is like 19 miles away yeah. or something. Yes. There's a hotel right over here somewhere. Um, and it is just a huge, huge, fun event to come to. So right. highly recommend, all, like Tony said, all the chassis manufacturers are here, the representatives from the tire company. And by the way, this, this tire that Tony's talking about, Brad and Becky are here. And this tire was developed. They, uh, um, Cup Cards rented a racetrack in Florida a number of winters ago and brought some of the best drivers in the country and ran literally thousands and thousands right. and thousands of laps uh, over many days to get the absolute perfect tire combination. And then he went back to Vega, you know, or Vega was actually there. And Vega started building these tires, creating right. these tires. No, not only uh, four cup carts. Not only cup carts uses it, but most four cycle right, um, right. Yeah. tracks use it, the same tire. So. And, and that's why I tell, I encourage drivers or club members to tell your club if they're not running the Vega Red for 206, I mean, let them run whatever they want for the other classes, sure. but for 206, 
try to stay in line with the CKNA rules that allow you to go any place you want to go, It'll allow you to run the, the divisional races. You might want to go on vacation down to Florida during the winter. You can run a divisional down there. And also the Winter Nationals are down there. And then we have the Norts here. You're in the Midwest. You want to race at Ohio or someplace, your, your car will be legal. And that's what it's all about. And then, like I said, in this year we had the Northwest Series. So it allows drivers from their local club, if they want to get a little more experience, they want to get a little better, they want to increase their driving craft, come to one of these races, and you will get better, whether you finish dead last or you're able to get up there. But you always learn a lot. And it takes some time. But you will be better when you go back to your local club racing a series like this because the best of the best are here. The people in the pits are the best. They can help you. Like I said, our sponsors, they definitely know what it takes to run a CKNA divisional and a national race. And that's why we encourage you to support those sponsors. And you'll see them on our paper there. And like I said, they're all here in the pits. We talked about RLV coming all the way from California. And I know uh, uh, Rod and art for, <laughs> for, for, for many years and actually they brought me to Santa Maria one time to have a they had a Grand National there for IKF and it, they really did a great job and so I, I you know love those guys and they're originally from Long Island New York so they're, <laughs> they're hometown boys to us and, and we have many 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 people here uh, would come in I was sitting behind a registration desk and they come in they ask and oh, where did we get wristbands I tell them and then I'd ask them I always ask them who's your, who's your driver who are you cheering on you can't imagine how many Tony I said, we don't know anybody here. <laughs> We're just coming here to watch a racing. So, yeah, you're welcome. And once you have a wristband, you can walk through the pits. I'd say 99% of the pits, you can go talk, and they will talk your ear off. They'll yes. give you every bit of yes. information they can. They'll be happy to have you, offer you a soda pop or a water <laughs> or something. Um, so, yeah, this is, this is the place to this be. This is the place so to friendly. be. Yeah, and I tell people, you know, this is the Grand National, but it is – a happening it is an event you know whether or not you're racing or not some people just want to be here just for the excitement just to be a part of it yep. you had the chili bake-off last yeah. night you know you just can't and like you said you go through the pitch you got a question and, and i'm the same way i tell anybody you need any local clubs in my area you want to know about ckna you want to know about 206 racing give me a call give, i put yeah. my email out there so uh this is it tony by the way that that you hear that's tony the toe I've been working with a number of years. He is also the Northeast promoter, and that's why he keeps uh, saying about, you know, come up to my area. Yep. Um, he lives in Long Island, New York, and he uh, yeah. organized races. Where did we race last year? We raced We raced New at York, Oakland Valley, Oakland of course. Valley. That's Hannon Motorsports. And then we went to New Jersey Motorsport New Jersey, Park. Yep, very nice which place. Which was very Big nice facility. place. Yep. I mean, if everybody's telling me they want to go back there. So okay. we'll, we'll talk about that at another yep. time. But, and then we went to Pittsburgh International, Pittsburgh? which Pittsburgh was the old Beaver it. Run Wampum, uh, the different people have different names for it, but it's called Pittsburgh International. We call it Pitt. And uh, it's a full sports car course. We have oh, a car yeah. track within the sports car course. Um, and very, very nice, and everybody treats us wonderful. But I, I highly recommend you come to any one of these races. Um, and they're not going to be as big. The divisional races are not no, going to be as no. big all year long as, as uh, Grand Nationals no. here. We have over 500 entries, so we've got many, many thousands of people on site right now. And um, during the day, eventually during slow times, the camera guys are so good, and they'll just show a picture of the pits. They'll just have a still shot yep. of the pits and all the action going on. It's all like a the bunch tents. of ants. You see all around. the tents, yeah. and uh, it is amazing amount amount of people. And Newcastle is one of the few places that you can hold a race like this. I don't know oh, about yeah. out west. There's probably play it, but I'm talking, you know, from the Midwest to the East Coast. There's only maybe one or two other tracks that might might be able to handle. Uh, but it, it's just a fantastic place. It's been the place for many years. Mark Dismore, of course, senior Mark Dismore, who raced carts and in the indie cars. And you go down there and you got pictures in the book. You can look back at karting from the 60s. Uh, and, and it's Comet Cart Sales. And if you don't know Comet Cart Sales, you, you, that you, is... You, you've never had a cart. You've never had a cart. Yeah, I everybody mean, has bought right. something it, from it, Comet Cart It's Comet Cart sales. Yeah. sales, and they, do an, they have just about every part for every cart. It's amazing the amount of inventory they have. And they supported karting forever, you know, and, and we can't thank them enough for being here to keeping the sport alive. And the main building here actually has a restaurant in it with I don't know how yeah. many people, you know, dozens of people uh, operating a restaurant. I'm here to tell you, Tony, <laughs> this is the best, best food. racetrack food I <laughs> yeah. have ever had at yeah. any racetrack. Well, it's all homemade. And, yeah, it's all homemade. And I've been to a lot of racetracks, believe yep. me. I'm sure you have, too. Yep. This is the food is the best. Um, at the end of the day, you know, after everything's shut down, they've got a bar, you know, a cash yep. bar or whatever. Yep. Um, 
just you'll feel absolutely at home here. We're sitting in the championship lounge. Yeah, we're in the cha- yeah, champions lounge. <laughs> and we can see the whole track uh, uh, without the screen being in front of us. But we can see the whole track from up here. So you can come up here. They got a bar up here and stuff. And yeah. that's where they have some of their benefits and stuff going on when they have, I guess, awards and stuff. So, you know, Mark really put a lot into this. He's got garages for people to rent. I was just going to say, th- there's garages lining this <laughs> section of the racetrack yeah. that, you know, goes around two corners, whatever. And I started talking to people. You know where some of these people are from? You'd think they're all local, right? Yeah. No, they're from other states <laughs> and other countries. Other countries. They rent a spot. That yeah. Rent a garage for Leave a year. Leave their stuff here, yeah. and they don't have to transport yeah. it. Yeah. Do you believe that? Yeah, yeah and, no. He's, it, I, I believe he's probably one of the first tracks that started that. Now, Track House has it down in North Carolina. Okay. They have some the garages. GoPro. Yeah, well, the old GoPro. Yep. We've got to call the Track House now. But uh, they do it. And, it, you know, there's a few tracks uh, that allow have this or allow a container to be there and people to store their stuff. I know Tim has some permanent yep. stuff th- there for people. But this was one of the first tracks that I came to that had these garages and saying, hey, you can rent it and leave your stuff here. You don't have to transport it. You don't need a trailer, you know. So, uh, again, Mark Dismore put a lot of thought into this. And, and the fact that he even invested in it, you know, yeah. that he wanted it. He wanted to support the sport of karting because that's where he started. That's where his dad started. Do you and, know if uh, Mark built this or bought this? I don't know. I've no, I asked. think he built it. He built it. Okay. I, I'm, 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 I'm going out on yeah. a limb, but yep. I think he built it. <laughs> yeah. Well, had it built. But right. Yeah. 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 And, and, you know, we have everything in the pits. We have everything, transport vehicles, everything from full semis. Yeah. And multiple. There's a number of teams with uh, at more than one. A-Max racing. Semis. Yeah, I just, I just <laughs> went by today. I didn't realize they had a bunch of support trucks <laughs> for the major semi. But, yeah. They got an one, elevator in there they and got, everything. Yeah, so they do. They, Tony's not kidding. They really do. So, um, they got huge tents, and we go all the way from that extreme all the way down to there's people here with just their car, yeah. uh, like a uh, SUV or a, what do you call it? An SUV uh, or yeah. a pickup truck pulling yeah. that cart out of the back, putting it on the, the stand, yeah. and, and pulling yeah, out a toolbox yes. and starting to work on it. So, yeah, we, we love that. So I mean, you would be welcome here. I, yeah. I, I'm saying if you want to race, you would be welcome here oh, without yeah. a doubt, no matter what your, you know, what your background is. Yeah. And you will learn something, guaranteed. So definitely think about coming out here. Yep. I believe cadets are out there right now, or is that kid cards? Let's see. It should be, should be uh, cadets right now. It's cadets. I'm just looking at the schedule here. Kid cards will be out. Kid next cards then. at 10:32. So about three yeah. more minutes. Oh, okay. It's so. cadet. It yeah, is and cadet. that's another thing we do. Uh, Cup cards follows the schedule right to the second, right to the half, uh, right yeah. to the millisecond. That's another thing. People come to me and say, "I can't believe you're doing this." Yeah. Well, we, we do the best we can. And when there is a problem, we, we let the drivers know you we're two minutes off, we're, we're a half hour off. You yep. know, things could happen. And so then you can adjust your schedule. Yep. But it, that takes a lot of work. And I got to thank Greg and team for putting that together, for giving us that infrastructure for the Northeast Series. And that's, you know, the one thing, CKNA is not going to run a race unless it follows their procedures and rules and, and runs a race the way they want it to be run. And they have been doing a great job. And like I said, given the four cycle racers, a championship place to race to test their skills against the best of the best. Sure. Let me tell you, with and the names that we have here today, it's going to be unbelievable in these features. Get ready for a lot of action in the feature race. It is going to be a tough, you know, top five spots are going to be tough. Well, the best in the country. Well, the best in a number of countries. A number. We have, we, I know we have people from New Zealand here uh, racing. We have people from Belgium, all over the United States. I don't know how many states. The mm-hmm. one state we're missing, though, and I still haven't yeah. seen it, Tony. You know what I'm going to say? I got this bounty. Utah. The state of Utah. <laughs> I don't understand it. I know there's a really good racetrack like Thule or Thule or something wow. just west yeah. of Salt Lake City. It's very popular. <laughs> we have never, and I've been here since day one, the very first day when we piggybacked on a little club track yeah. and tried to race with them. I've never had an entry from the state of Utah. And a number of years ago, I said that, and Stacy Gunn from Camp Chaos yes. heard that <laughs> and immediately went to her Facebook page and changed her hometown to somewhere in Utah. And she wanted the bounty. Well, <laughs> I love Stacy to death, but no, I'm not, I'm not paying her the bounty because I know she's pulling my leg on that. She doesn't live in Utah. She lives in uh, South Bend, Indiana. Or, oh, somewhere in that area. Yeah, South Bend, Michigan, around there. So, yeah. yeah. So, um, uh, again, when you talk about Stacy and J.D. Gunn and Joe DeBover, I yeah. mean, you got to thank and, and Marshall Martin. Marshall, I mean, yeah. you, you, know, you want wisdom? Talk to Marshall oh, Martin. Yeah. I mean, this guy's been around. He's great. He, you know, I, I, I can go up to him and say, I'm just having this problem. And he comes up with something. He goes, why don't you check this? And I go check it. He's absolutely right on the money. Yeah. So, but you talk about Target Distributing. Yeah. And Joe DeBover owns yeah. Target Distributing. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. the um, wholesaler right. for, for all, all the car parts. shops. Yeah. Right. And uh, he tries to carry the main parts that we need. He definitely carries the Briggs and Stratton. He carries the clutches. 
So another great supporter of the sport. And, and a, a nice guy, too. Oh, really yeah, nice Joe. Guy, Joe's a great yeah. guy. But, I mean, a, a, a great supporter of the sport, keeping this sport alive. I mean, I think it was kind of slowing down a little bit. You know, you had your people racing yeah. the big races and stuff, but you didn't have the locals picking up new carters and stuff. It was getting tough. And the 206 program, like I said, Briggs and Stratton brought that one back, came out with the rules, and then CKNA enforced it and kept it going and, and, and just kept mm -hmm. building on this whole program. And it's, it's really a great place for four-cycle racers. Yeah, and Briggs was set up yesterday. They had a tent and some stuff that's gone yep. now. But I think Kyle, I think I saw him this morning. Yeah. I think he's still on the property. Kyle was around. He represents Briggs and Stratton. Uh, of course, Dan Roche is the guy that runs the racing division. He couldn't make it. I understand he was over in Europe or something. Italy or something, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, again, like I said, I, I, Briggs and Stratton did the right thing and got us going and, and continues to support. And by keeping the rules the same year after yeah. year, you know, you invest in an engine, it's pretty good. I mean, it, there would, we had to change the seals at one point and stuff, so that kind of finally phase something out we had to phase the carburetor out after so many years not a big deal you know it, i mean you could buy a short block you don't have to buy a whole engine so uh th these are the things i know that i think keep people in in the sport they're able to afford it i'm not saying no racing is cheap <laughs> yeah it, right it, it's it, i believe it's the most economical yeah, form of motorsport i would say but it's so. still not you're still gonna you know Get ready to no, spend you, a few dollars. You get to a race like this, you got tuners in the pits. You know, people are paying tuners out there. So it is a big thing that uh, this, this thing has brought about to everybody. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it's a good thing. Yeah. I'm, I'm so, so, so very grateful and fortunate to be involved from day one. Yeah. And, uh, oh, so I'm going to brag on you a little bit, Tony. So Cup Cards North America, we got big enough, as Tony said earlier, we had to split. We had to add the South Division. Then after that, the Canadian Division. Then after that, the Northeast Division. So out, out of every one of our new divisions, who was the most successful the first year? <laughs> <laughs> Tony the you know, Toad. Yeah, <laughs> but I want to thank the Carters for that. I mean, you know, I put it together and I and I try to support it and I try to go around and hear the you know what people want what they don't like what they like what they don't like but I really got to thank the Carters. I mean I was pushing it for probably three years yes. prior. You talked to me many times. When, yep. Right. Yep. I mean I was pushing it with the, you know with CKNA, but I was pushing it with the Carters. I was I would go to a local track and saying hey you got to get this 206 program going and maybe we can get a national up here and especially in Maryland at, at Nicholson Speedway and Sandy Hook. Uh, they came through for me. Their people came to these races, you know, started, supported the Northeast. There was a lot of drivers from Maryland and uh, from the Maryland area. We also got the Orville Racetrack in Pennsylvania. They did a great job of supporting us. So, and, of course, Oakland Valley. But, I mean, that I really thank the Carters for making that so successful. They did a great job. Sure. Um and I know a number of people on site and probably people back home too are wondering, oh, what are, what, what's the schedule going to be next year? This is the final race yeah. of the year this We're year. We're working on it. What's the schedule? <laughs> well, that, that's what I'm here to tell you. Yeah. Traditionally, it comes out this weekend. Or it has in the past. We've been fortunate enough that it yeah. has in the past. It is not coming out this, no, this weekend. weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so anybody who's interested or wondering or just like me, it is not coming out. Just just hang tight. It won't be long, Yeah, but yeah. it's not coming out this weekend. Right. So. We're working on it, and I know Greg has been in touch with some of the top other promoters in the country. You know, not that we, we, we really interfere with anybody because we're, we're four-cycle, but you do want to try to spread things out, and you want to try to give the Carters time to race their local stuff. Well. And, and you want to, like, keep the big races where there's nothing else around so they can afford to come to this one. You and know? for, you know, with the exception of, like you say, the big races, we got right. Charlotte Motor Speedway, right. we've got uh, uh, this one, whatever. The other ones we try to move around. We try not to do right. the same thing we did last year, just right. like I said, and we want to give other Last year was a them. last minute thing. Yeah. You know, the Northeast Series came into play, yeah. and, and therefore we had sometimes back to back. And I yep. mean, it's, it's not so bad for, for us, the racers, and, and like me supporting the Northeast, but for the workers. They, they didn't get, you know, like you. You were on yeah. the road. You didn't oh, go home. <laughs> my goodness. The month of, I can't remember, it was June or July. Right? I, I literally left home in central Minnesota. Right. Went down to Steve's house. Spent the night. We had to leave early the next morning. We spent a week in Whiteland, Indiana, just south of Indianapolis. 
got all packed up, all the equipment, you know, the yeah. trailer, everything. Went to Pittsburgh, spent a week in <laughs> Pittsburgh, and then we had to rush home as quick as we come from, could from Pittsburgh <laughs> to go back to, to Minnesota, Minnesota. <laughs> to get out of the car, get put your dirty underwear in the in the laundry basket, put some clean underwear in your bag, and take off for the airport. <laughs> we, and we went to Toronto, Canada for a week. Yeah. So. So uh, that's the thing. Hopefully we can, we can uh, ease up on the workers and give them some time off. It's not back-to-back, especially the tech guys. But the tech guys have been training people, yeah. so we're, hopefully we can start filling those slots. And, we, uh, we brought a new one in this, this weekend, okay. by the way. We, we've got uh, Claude came in from uh, oh. Quebec. Okay. So he's French okay. speaking and, and he's struggling a little bit with the English. I mean, he's doing fine. Yeah. He just has a, a serious accent. But, yeah, Claude and he brought his wife along, so they're, they're working Great. down in tech and Claude's working out very well. Uh, Steve, the, the co-owner of Cup Carts and the head tech guy, was very happy with Claude up in Toronto, and that's when they hired him for Grand Series. Okay. So. And then we forgot to mention the, the guy that runs the Canadian Series, Gerald oh. and, and his wife Marie, oh. right? Yeah, and Marie, you'll, 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 okay, so you, you have to go, everybody at home, you have to go subscribe right now, otherwise you're going to miss this. Yeah. But Marie is going to do the grid walk with me, and she's going to oh, go ahead. Great, yeah, she great. does such a good job. And this was completely impromptu last year. Yeah. Um, she, just, she just saw a need for something. She started doing it. And it was perfect. I had right. never had so much help, and it, it was absolutely perfect. Marie, my hat is off to you, both you and Gerald. Um, Marie is going to go in front of me as we're yeah. doing the grid walk. <laughs> Get it ready. And <laughs> because some people just yeah. flat out, okay, you know, yeah. I should explain it. Some people have their race face on. Yeah. They don't want me to come <laughs> bug them. Yeah. <laughs> and I get it. No, I get um, it. I get and, it. And, and I don't You're blame right. them. But I don't know, yeah. and I right. don't like to go and on you don't worldwide want to TV right. Right. and ask them, and they turn me down. So <laughs> Marie's going to take care of that and have it in advance and then standing, be standing by or pointing or whatever yeah. to the next one. So. And it, it just works so well. So that's kind yeah, of the yeah. so behind the scenes stuff of what, yeah. and what, you, what you're going to see when you pay your nine ninety nine today. Right. You Gerald, might as well do that right now. Just right. take care of that. <laughs> yeah, Gerald and Marie do a great job. And Marie doing that walk, walk down with you, that, that's a, definitely a big help. And oh. we thank her for that. Yeah, absolutely. And they do so much stuff, yeah. the yeah. two of them, yeah. yeah. But that's the Canadian promoter. It's, it's yeah. Tony is Northeast, and they are the equivalent up in, up right. in Canada. Canada. No, right. there's all kinds of logistical problems with uh, adding a Canadian region. <laughs> right. There's, it's out of the know, country. <laughs> yeah, well, it's out of the country, yeah. Um, it, you know, it involves passports and all that, which isn't a major deal. But, um, you know, there's the money change and everything. So, anyway, we're going to head on down to the pits, and we're going to get David Land doing an interview. All right, senior light. Se going yep. out senior today. light for their warm up session. Right. We're going to go through all the classes we have. After senior light, we have junior, masters, and senior medium. Once again, if you weren't listening to us earlier, 50 carts made the field, the main event later on this afternoon. And uh, you better subscribe right now so you can watch that. But 50 carts made the field, 10 
60 altogether. Are going to be added right. from right. the LCQs right. for a total of 60, with the exception of heavy, we're going to add 61. Right. 61. There was we only 61. Not going to send entries. one person yeah. home. Yeah. But oh, uh, yes. look at this. this Bent is... axle. Oh, I, This no. is just what I said. Yes. This is just what I said. Do now, not... he's got time to fix that. If well, he's, he's got, got time to fix it, but just what I said, don't get into trouble. Yeah. It's only the warm-ups. Yeah. And already we see a bent axle. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Yesterday on the grid, I saw people banging into each other on the grid. Yeah, why? <laughs> why? Come on. <laughs> really? I said, guys, you didn't even get on the track yet. Yeah. So, uh, tough break there, but he's got time to fix it. Number 29. He's I got think time. Garrison. Looks Garrison, like Garrison yeah. Or something? yeah. Yeah, maybe. But get, get it back in the pits as quick as you can is the issue. It's amazing sometimes how easy that axle will bend, you know? It, it, you, it's a no, for people at home, these are hollow axles. Yes, they are bending, hollow. Yeah. But they are still steel oh, and, you know. Yeah, they're, they're strong. And you yeah. got to hit it really, you got to hit somebody really and hard you, to bend Sometimes you hit it just right, and that's what causes another it. Another one Another off. one out. Yeah. Well, at least he's back. He's he, back, yeah. But he's not but out. It's like Tony keeps saying, this is no time to screw up, <laughs> yeah. you know? You got your main now event, he's the event coming, yeah. So, uh. I'm not quite sure what's going on there, but. Yep. Oh, and yesterday when we saw, oh, I think it was Owen Lloyd, we saw his cart smoking, yep, remember? Yep. We thought he blew an engine. Did you find out what it was? Yes, and, and I knew it, very rare that he bl you blow an engine, yep. but it could happen. Yep. I'm not going to say that it won't happen, but it wasn't a blown engine. The cap where you pour the oil in, now either it cracked or they didn't tighten it and it came out, and it yep. kept blowing the oil up, of course, and onto the exhaust pipe. Knowing that family, I doubt they didn't put it on yeah, right. right. I'm leaning towards it probably but the crack. The crack. <laughs> yeah, because they, they're so meticulous. Yeah, no, I know. But and, and that's one of the first things you said. You said yeah. it's either yep. um, um, pipe wrap. Pipe, pipe came or, off or, or whatever. Oil catch can right. or something. Right. Well, you were right. It was yeah. something to do with oil. It was there. a lot of smoke. Yep. And I didn't think, I mean, he was still on the power, so I knew the engine didn't yeah. blow. I mean, but he could have blew, blown a ring or something, but it would keep running, but not good. But yeah. it was that. And a tough break, man. He was, he, you know, he was doing good. And. Yeah, you know, and he got the meatball flag. He yeah. had to come out. Well, he had to. He was probably yeah. spilling oil on the track. So, you know? so the meatball flag, okay, you have a black flag. If you did something wrong, you, you did something, you're being penalized. The meatball flag is the same flag, a black flag with a big orange meatball. meatball. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a big orange circle in the middle. That means there's something wrong with the cart. That's yeah. a, a mechanical yeah. infraction. Not, Both of them mean you got to get off. Yeah, you're not being penalized. You just got to get off because it's safe. Right. Today is that that's what they represent. Um, of course, green, gold, right, uh, right. white, one lap of gold, checkered. And then, and then, as you mentioned, when we up in the tower here say purple, purple the driver's yeah. gone purple. Uh, NASCAR does this. I mean, they have they go purple, and purple means they turn the fastest lap on of, the track of, of that class. Of that class, yeah. yes, of right. that class. Of those people on the track right, right now. So, so uh, that's the, you know. I didn't even know what purple meant, you know, a couple of years ago. Oh, and yeah. <laughs> I'd hear Xander say he went purple, and I was like, what's he talking about? So, uh, you know, unless you know my laps and all of that stuff, oh, you really don't know. Good point. We yeah. are normally on race monitor. We are not right. this weekend. We are on race hero. Right, and I didn't know that either because I couldn't see who made the mains and stuff, and somebody this morning, uh, Hudson Brown, told me it was race hero. Yep. I should have been. I was looking at the Facebook and all of that. So, yeah, there's A. Garrison. He's out. He's hopefully get his axle fixed. Somebody up next to him, not sure who it is. And so, but these are people that made the big show. So, definitely, uh, there's plenty of people selling axles out there. If yeah, he needs oh, one. Yeah. But uh, a lot of people keep plenty of uh, spare axles in their, in their trailer or whatever on their tool area. So, uh, not a problem. And he's got plenty of time to change it. So, uh, yeah, it's that'll not a be big good. Deal. Yeah, so, that'll yeah, be good. It should be fine. He's just yeah. not getting as warm as. Uh, right. Um, yeah, warm, warm up going well, on right now. It wasn't. Yeah. I mean, it happened right on the when they pulled out. Sure. <laughs> so not sure, but I, like I tell drivers, this is a warm up. Now you've made the big show. Don't mess it up. You know, get into the big show before you have a problem. There's another guy, Went uh, off. but he's okay. Back on. At least he's running. Sure. Yep. So uh, it's yeah. Beautiful uh, facility. There's a picture of the second floor window. There is where the scoring girl oh, is, yeah. Megan, and. I think Matt, yep, right there, right, right the there. top center. She's yep. she's up on top there, and she's looking out, and all the scoring sheets are right below her. She posts them in the window for right. everybody to look at to see how their results are. Yep. Yeah, and we've got Megan, and she's not only a scoring girl. I mean, that's a really diminishing her. She's also <laughs> the complete series, um, what is she, administrator. Administrator, And yep. she's also HR, and she's absolutely everything. Yeah. Yeah, so, she, she does a great job and, and makes sure everything is right. Oh and, and if you got to She books all her hotel rooms. She does everything. Yeah, yeah, Literally, she yeah. does everything. No, yeah. and if I have a question at the Northeast Series, you always go to Megan. Megan, Megan. Yeah. <laughs> so, and she's got yeah. Maddie up there and Darla. Um, oh, Darla's, Darla Darla's and, up there, too. And yeah. her husband. Uh, yeah, yeah. Do tech yeah, and, and tires. And, tech. 
and they've been a great help on the Northeast oh, series. They're from upstate New York, yep. right, I believe? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. And Darla's got her own racetrack, um, Avon. The, the family does. Avon. And what does she choose we, to we, do on weekends? She comes racing with yes, us. Yeah. How many times has she worked with us? So, so they run Avon Racetrack, and as the people up there say, Avon. Oh, okay. But okay. I say Avon. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, you and I have both <laughs> said things a little bit differently. Yeah, right. When, we, <laughs> you know, when, between the Brooklyn <laughs> accent and the Midwest <laughs> accent, yeah, we'll uh, get it right, you know. Yeah. But, but uh, yeah. Listen they, to it, both of us and choose something <laughs> right in the middle, and you'll probably be right. Right. That's yeah. the Genesee Valley Race Cart Club up there, and yep. they, they've been around. That's another original track. It was designed after, what, okay, uh, designed after a track in California, actually, that Avon racetrack, Genesee nice. Valley racetrack. And then we're going to turn it over to Dave Land. He's got another interview down there. So uh, stay tuned. Whether you're dominating the pre-final or just getting started, BriggsRacingGear.com is the only place for official Briggs Racing swag. Place an order of at least $25 by October 15th and you'll receive a free gift. BriggsRacingGear.com Here at MPG Motorsports, our main goal is to provide the best pathway into professional motorsports for our entire team, drivers and mechanics alike. based out of Whiteland Raceway Park in Indiana. For more information, contact us at chase at mpg-motorsports.com. At Precision Performance Karting and Brandon Jartha Crack Racing, developing winners is what we do. We're a complete karting program with support, driver coaching, parts, and arrive and drive packages at all levels. Trackhouse Motorplex Karting Challenge, Club Races, the CKNA South Division, the CKNA Majors, and a complete in-house ladder program with the BJR to move from 206 club racing to the highest levels of KA and X30 competition in the U.S. If you're ready to learn from industry veteran John Seglem and multi-time U.S. Pro Kart Series champion Brandon Jarzakrat, head over to ppkartingfl.com and contact us today. Are you a racing enthusiast? Drive Your Line is the Mid-South's only full-service kart shop. We make dreams a reality for those five years old and up. All racers start in karting, and we're the purveyors of fun for the whole family. Karting the Coast is presented by Drive Your Line Kart Shop and is the premier race series on the Gulf Coast and brings racing to Biloxi at Finish Line Performance Karting and at the world-renowned NOLA Motorsports Park. Call us at 601-667-0770 or find us at driveyourline.com. Also on Facebook or or Instagram. Hi, my name is Brandon from Brandon Jarvis Crack Racing slash Precision Performance Karting. I'm driving the 138 in Senior Light and Senior Medium. Here's the rest of our driver lineup. Rob Howden, the driver of the number 37 in Legends and Master from Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. Kay Yeager, number 64 in Junior, hometown Kewaskum, Wisconsin. Chris Carroll, car 12, running Senior Heavy and Masters. Hometown is uh, Charleston, South Carolina. I'm Christopher McKeithen, driver of the 19 and senior light and senior, senior medium from Gastonia, North Carolina. I'm James Overbeck, driver of the 48 and senior light and senior medium. I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. Paulie Massimino, number 40, senior light, senior medium, hometown, Chris Knockman, North Carolina. You need it? We got it. At Cart Eat Parts, we are your complete online aftermarket cart part superstore. From chains to bearings to bumpers and components, we've got it in stock and ready to ship straight to your door from our base in Ontario, Canada. Check us out online at carteparts.ca.
If you're a do-it-yourself 206 racer, then LawsonSpeedShop.com needs to be in your favorite spot. Along with building rocket ship engines, we keep a full stock of everything that the privateer racer needs to get out on track and win. Visit our website at LawsonSpeedShops.com for more. Okay, so we're watching uh, everything live right now. Hey, we're going to go down to the pits and get another interview with my favorite, David Land. Okay, we're back up here in the tower, and we're watching. Uh, this is our warm-up session. Uh, once again, everybody gets a, a few minutes, um, uh, about eight, seven, about seven minutes, roughly, of warm-up. So, and we're going to start the grand finals here at 11.50 Eastern time. So make sure you watch. Hey, you're not going to get the grand finals unless you have a subscription, so make sure you pay that right now. It's $9.99 for the entire month, and you're going to see all kinds of other stuff. But you will be cut off. You'll be behind the wall, I think they refer to it as. So, um, oh, the, wall will go up. the wall will go up, yeah. So, anyway, uh, the, yeah, make the sure wall there's will Tony. Go up. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tony was talking and yeah. I couldn't hear him. <laughs> Tony, like I say, Tony and I are usually used to just having a single stick microphone right, in our right. head, just standing alongside the track. <laughs> Making sure a the full batteries are good. <laughs> with massive mixing boards, and Tony's got to hit buttons over there and whatever every time we're back on the air. So. So and Tony's doing a really good job, and, and I'm happy to be working yeah, with us. Dave, to right. Tony the Tosarillo, by the way, a true legend up in the Northeast. Lives I don't in know Long about Island. a legend, but and, and, well, he is. Don't let don't let, don't let him tell you different. And I'm Dave Mack from Minnesota. Yep. I'm just a hillbilly from northern Minnesota. And, yeah, and I got very fortunate to be involved in karting a number of years ago. I've been with Cup Karts since day one. So yeah, yeah, it goes way back for me. You know, uh, as a kid, uh, having a go kart when I was 12 years old, but not able to race it. I lived in Brooklyn, New York, and there was no place there. And my dad was a butcher, and he, you know, he, he just would. He didn't even know about racetracks, you know. So he would take me to Sears and Roebuck's parking lot on Sunday and let me go crazy in did, there. Did I see your dad on Gangs of New York? No, no, my, the, no yeah, yeah, Well, yeah, he might have been he in was there because yeah, yeah. <laughs> they did film some of that yeah. stuff. But uh, yeah, no, Day -Lewis. He, he did, yeah. <laughs> So uh, we, you know, that's how I started. But then uh, it wasn't until I was in my 30s that I, I saw an ad in the, at the time, no internet. There was an ad in the paper that said there's racing at Jones Beach, and Jones Beach was not far from Brooklyn. And I said to my wife, "Come on, we're going there." Sure. So we just, went there just and to watched. Watch. You weren't we, interested. We just in went racing. to watch. Yeah. Okay, so we're getting ready uh, to <laughs> come back to my stories, but we got David Land. We're trying to get some of these good interviews done right now, so we'll turn it over to Dave Land.
Okay, so we're back here watching the action. This currently is the Masters class out for their warm-up session. After the Masters, we'll have senior medium and then a slight break. You might as well sign up for Cart Chaser right now for your monthly subscription. Otherwise, you're going to be behind the wall, I guess we're going to call it, or the wall's right. going up or the something. The wall's so. going up. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, so the Masters are out there right now getting their warm-up. So far, everybody keeping it clean, not getting into any problems. You want to make the feature, so that's the right thing to do. And then we'll send out Senior Medium, which is, you know, always a b very big and competitive class, no matter what division you race with CKNA, whether it's the North, whether it's the, uh, the Northeast, whether it's the South or the Canadian. I, I know from going to some of these races, the, the Senior Medium is the big one. I guess everybody who's light could put a few pounds on, every, and the, the Medium guys can definitely get in there. Uh, again, you know, we try to keep the weights. CKNA tries to keep the weights. That allows a lot of people to be competitive. Some people say we got too much weight in one of the classes, but we're allowing for that person that's a big person to, to be able to do that, to get into that class and be competitive. But always looking at that. CKNA is always going to look at that, look at the weights that come across the scales and see if there needs to be an adjustment made to that due to the races that we have come into the series. So... That, that's important. And, and I tell the Northeast drivers and people that come to the Northeast race, if you got any ideas, you, I mean, I can't say I'm going to ha have everything changed, or, but we, we, the, the ideas are great. As I, I pick them up, I'll t talk to Greg and Steve and see if some of these ideas make sense. Sometimes there are limiting factors that we have to think about because we want to keep this series as best as we can. And, and just by the numbers that are here today, you got to say we we're doing the best we can. We're keeping. We don't want to. We don't want to lose this momentum <laughs> of of the amount of carters that we have coming to a race. So uh, it's really big for us, and we're trying to keep it where we can pretty much keep everybody together. Yeah. So here we. Go. Oh, there we are. Here we are. Uh, this is still the Masters class. In a few minutes, we'll have the Senior Medium. That will be the last class. And a short break. Hey, sign up for that subscription right now. I'm going to keep hammering on you because I think there's a few people out there that have not signed up yet. So we've got a number of new members. Uh, we're very thankful for that. And just a reminder, this isn't like a one-shot deal. You're not just going to watch a race today. You're going to watch a whole month's worth of entertainment and programming. Cart Chaser has all kinds of stuff on it. Yeah, and there's going to be next week, they're going to be broadcasting a uh, competitor. It's not a direct competitor, so I will mention them. The USPKS, it stands for United States Pro Card Series. So they will have that one. They're going to be broadcasting live from there, too. So you not only get the Briggs races here at Newcastle, you get the uh, two-stroke USPKS races. So, yeah, and there will be another of replays and all kinds of stuff. So it's just a fantastic channel. Jump on her, and um, I, you're going to be really sad if you're watching this thinking you're going to keep watching it because it's going to go off the air. So, or a uh, firewall, I guess, is going to go up or some kind of wall. So $9.99, are you kidding me? Just just pay your money <laughs> buy it, for goodness sake. And think about coming out here next year. There's yep. plenty of hotels. Yep. yep. No, it's a, like I said, it's not just a race. It's an event. No. And uh, sometimes just to be here, to be a part of it, to work, you know, just to be a pit crew member or whatever, or a volunteer. If, you know, we're always looking for volunteers if somebody wants to volunteer, especially on the northeast side. So uh, uh, that would be really good. So remember, this, this is the biggest race, four-cycle race in the country, and this is where you want to be. Checker flag is out, and we're going to switch over to David Land. We got an, uh, an interview with Emily, Emily Masters. De, the master. Emily Master. <laughs> Masters.
Yeah, and there was Emily to master. And I know I can't have favorites, but if I could, she would definitely be one of my favorites. And they're absolutely talking. Her, one of her sponsors is Jolly Good Soda. It's a, I think they call it a boutique soda or something. It came back to Wisconsin. It w went away, and the, somebody brought it back, and they chose to sponsor her. And she owes me a, a cold soda, by the way. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah, I <laughs> didn't know that. She tried to get me a <laughs> the other night. Yeah. And she also had, brings a cheese from Wisconsin. So. Emily's home track is Road America. They race oh, uh, wow. weekly there, and she races all over the country with us. Yep, so. yep. she um, came to New York, and uh, we appreciated it. Did a great job in New York. Yeah. And, uh, was really competitive, and a lot of the women in the pits just seemed to go over to her well, and congratulate and, her. And that's a good point, our demographics. A lot yep. of people don't realize how many women are involved right. in, in uh, karting, and specifically with us. Right. Emily is one of the premier ones. We had another one on earlier, Addison Ionello. Yep. Um, very, very accomplished racer, and we have a whole bunch of other ones. So, um, yeah, if you're if you're a female and interested in getting into karting, we welcome you with open arms, oh, and yeah. everybody will do everything to make it successful. I mean, I was with Danica Patrick at a race when she was 11 years old. Sure. So, and you everybody know. knows that name, Danica <laughs> yeah, Patrick. Right, right. Well, she started out in karts. She started so, out in karts. Yeah, uh, e-karting news, which is a, a you know another publication that everybody knows, Rob Howden, whatever. Mm. They had this year's IndyCar race, right? Or they were talking about this year's IndyCar race. Right. They had um, uh, 11 rows of three uh, cars. All the drivers, right? That made the field. 33, but they had them in the old days in their carts. Oh, Every wow. single one That's of them nice. started racing go-karts, nice. which yeah. every, everybody starts racing carts. Just Any about. kind of motorsport. Just yeah, about. Just about. Yes. So, yeah. In yeah. Europe, it's definitely big. That's yep. where yep. your Formula One people come from, and we've seen Lewis Hamilton and Michael Schumacher sure. and people like that. I remember reading about Michael Schumacher when he was a kid. I would get a magazine from over in Europe, and, uh, you know, I told my wife, I said, man, this kid is good. Yeah. You know, he was winning every race that I was reading in these magazines. <laughs> Okay, now listen, these interviews are really great, and, and I advise people to take this 999 because you learn a lot from the interviews, and we're going to turn it now back over to David Land for another good interview. So another fantastic interview by David Land. We're always happy to see that. Uh, this is the final class. This is the senior medium. This is their final uh, warm-up session. After this, we're going to take a slight break. And after that, we are going to come back live. But uh, the wall will be up. The wall so will be up. subscribe right, right. now. Right. So, uh, this will be the last you'll see of us on the free uh, live streaming. And I advise everybody, uh, you know, if you can, if you want to, definitely. Today is going to be an exciting day. 
and and this is where it all comes to end. This is it. This is the Grand National. This is where we crown the Grand National champion. This is it. This is the end of the CKNA series for, for 2023, and you want to be here. So $9.99 to get you the whole month subscrip subscription, and then we'll be back on the air at 11.30 if you have that subscription. So, you know, think about it. It is This is the big race. This is it. This is the last one. We're going to crown the Grand National Champion in each class, so you want to be there. I, I advise you to be there. We've had great interviews. It gives you an insight to what's going on. As far as, like I said, if you're a newcomer or whatever, the interviews help you. If you listen to what these drivers are saying and what these pit crew people are saying about how you got to handle a big race like this, this is double the laps, what you have to do, how you have to be conservative, how if you are back in a pack, Emily t t said it right, I just got to do what I got to do. I got to start moving up spot by spot, but I got to be careful and not get knocked off the track. We don't want to create a red flag because that could shorten the race. And, and, and that's a problem. We don't have to worry about weather today, Dave. It's, right. it's, it's great. So we know uh, the weather's not going to change it. And <laughs> the animated Jason Burgess out there. We love watching Jason. Jason Burgess yeah. is out there saying, that's it. We're done. He <laughs> could take a break. He's got his costume on. And he's got his suit on, I should say, orange and black. That's our colors. So, yeah, yeah in case uh, somebody didn't hear or know it to us today, Jason Burgess, every series he re yeah, works with, and he works a lot of series, he has a custom-built suit for that series <laughs> so and our colors are primarily orange and black so right. um friday he wore an all orange, orange suit right saturday all black suit and today orange right. and black striped yeah suit. he's doing a great job out there and, and we appreciate him coming to this that's how important this race is with the people that they do so uh we're we're ready you know uh, we're getting ready and like i say if you haven't signed up yet at the car chaser you got to do it because if you want to see the best of the best you want to see who's going to be the grand national champion yeah this is it this is the last race of the season as far as ckna there's still karting going on all over the country guaranteed after this but this is it and uh, once again, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Dave. And uh, if you can read down uh, the amount of sponsors we have that made this race possible, that's, yeah. that's the best thing. And unfortunately, some of them get a little <laughs> bit small for me, so I can't see. I can give you the primary ones we yeah. have. RLV, of course, and, and Miranda. Oh, and, yeah. And, uh, everybody, CVR, Precision Performance Karting, as John Seaglam out there down in Florida. Uh, Briggs & Stratton, uh, Cam Concepts, NORAM, BRT, that's um, 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 Baron Racing, Team MGM Chassis, that's um, um, Axel uh, Rice. <laughs> Axel brings Paul in uh, well, April. Well, Axel brought his parents along. Noram, uh, MGM again. Uh, Target Distributing, Joe DeBober. Yep. Everybody has something through Target Distributing eventually. EK Chains, Max Torque, Park City, CKT, Coyote. Jim LaPerry is here, and that's close to your heart. I know you're a huge yep. Coyote fan. Yep, so, yep, yep. Uh, <laughs> Vega, CRG, um, MDE, uh, e-karting news, of course. We did Rob Howden uh, and Dave and Cole. Dave Cole, and there's racing. a massive battle between <laughs> yeah. them two. Beat Rob Howden, beat Dave Cole. Yep. So it's just so fun to play along with that. Uh, uh, oh. Cart Chaser and EKN, by the way. Cart Chaser yeah. and EKN. Cart Chaser is doing all the broadcasting. Tony and I are stumbling. We're a little bit old up here. <laughs> this is a very professional situation, professional yep. studio. Great We're not job. used to it. I, I, I wish I had a camera or something I'd point, but there's a whole <laughs> mixing board Tony's <laughs> responsible for. And, and we're, 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 apparently, we're surviving, but yep. I don't know how. But no, no, and, doing a great job up here. got a floor here. director talking yeah. in our ears, and it keeps our, Tony and I, every time he says something, we stop in yep. sentence because we the don't. The director tells yeah. us what to do, yeah. and we panic, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> but we're trying true. to get there. But uh, so excuse us a little yeah. bit. But uh, yeah, they, I mean, Xander has done a great job here. He has not definitely brought in some of the best equipment. He's oh. not skimping on anything, and that's what I'm saying. You got you got a big event going on. You got to think about car chaser, hiring car chaser, and they they're giving back to the carters. And, and this is yeah. what I've said for many years, and that's how I got involved. Only because I felt people were out there, you know, driving driving crazy, you know, trying to get the win a race, and nobody knew it. Sure. You know, I mean, you yeah. know, people knew it in a it little bit, but publicity. But it, yeah. Yeah. And then I used to write articles also, sure. write articles for magazines because people. People deserve to have that knowing that they're out there sure. and who, who's our karting heroes, who's our karting champions. So uh, I, I'm sure there's a lot of people who had never heard of Emily DeMaster before right, this interview. Right, well, right. I'll tell you what, she's a big deal. You should know about right. her. 
Right, and but, a lot of people never heard of me. So. Uh, Tony the Toe, exactly. <laughs> Tony the Toe right there, he's a legend. <laughs> I wasn't a champion in kart racing. I, I did my share. I mean, I won local championships, mm -hmm. but I never made the big time like this. So this is great, and I'm glad my kids got a chance to race. And now my grandkid. Grandkid, <laughs> Hudson Brown. And he's, he's in, yeah, he's in the yeah. mix, you know, yeah. so that, that's great. And th this is what you look for as far as a parent or a grandparent and, a, you know, people, friends out there. And Car Chaser has done a great job of bringing that now right to their house. House if they sure. want, you know, yep. that they couldn't make this race. They get to see it on yep. Car Chaser. And, you know, and, and we'd, we'd love to have you out here, yep. but if right. you can't make it, sign up for Car Chaser and you, it's just That's, like you're here. Yep. And uh, so, again, we thank our sponsors and we and the sponsors that uh, you look down, you know, if you got your schedule in front of you. I know, like Dave said, some of the sponsors are a little hard for us to see, but the main sponsors are there. Again, like I said, the big shout out to Briggs & Stratton, Vega Tires, who made this whole thing, br brought this whole thing together along with CKNA, Dave. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, Greg and uh, Steve, who, put, who thought about this whole thing, looked at other things and saying, here's what we got to do to run a good series. So uh, they've done a great job and uh, just unbelievable. Here we are for the Grand Nationals. Before we run, run away, I just got to get this yep. guy on. We are so fortunate to have him. Can you hear? Are you on? I'm on. This is the infamous Jason Burgess. He refers to himself as Chief Starter. Chief Starter. <laughs> He is the man, and we are so – this is the flag man that you saw out there, <laughs> very animated. We are so fortunate to have Jason. I truly appreciate you, you coming on board with CCA. Thanks, guys. <laughs> um, Having a good time? Yeah. Did you notice anything unusual out there, Jason, something that threw you off at all? Any? No, nah, it's usual. Okay. Everybody's <laughs> kind of a little normal. bit calmer today so far. Right, we'll see what good. happens once the features start. And Jason Burgess is dead center. He records every single start, and they go over it for oh, tramline violations. Great. Remember we were talking about tramlines? Jason, Jason, uh, absolutely. Oh, are we all on? Yep. No. <laughs> We're all on. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Jason records every, and then, and then they uh, discuss it and decide if there was a tram, by, tram line violation. So, yep. yeah. And, uh, dude, unfortunately, we can't see your signs. And yeah, on a rare occasion, you'll turn it around and show I'll, I'll try to turn it around it, it, for you. Well, and I, I'm not usually looking because we're watching down here by yep. that point. But, <laughs> but uh, I noticed you just turning back a couple of times, so we missed it. But thank you okay. very much for the signs. No Give problem. us a rough idea what some of them say because they can't see it on camera. Uh, this morning, it's usually just the good morning. Okay. Just kind of lighten the mood up for everybody. Okay, great. And so kind of kind of get the stress off of everybody. It's like it's day three. It's finals. Relax. No, if there's a if there's some kind of a uh, like a, a an infraction, I'll call it. Right. Yep. Where somebody hits somebody, then uh, CKNA the officials determine that card so and such. We'll say card zero one three. It'll say yeah. It'll say penalty, and then I'll just say penalty cart. 579 behind 32. Sorry if that's anybody. I'm not trying to signal you out. Right. <laughs> and contact so you know what's right. going on. And just to try to get them behind them to serve their penalty during the race versus coming versus coming off the track, finishing top three, and suddenly you're going to finish 15th or something. And we actually saw that yesterday. It was Tim Hannon and mm -hmm. uh, yep. Todd Barron. Mm -hmm. um, and Todd Barron, we saw him start fading. We right. weren't quite sure. Then we, we finally realized, yeah, he's got to go behind whoever it was, and it turned out to be Tim Hannon. Yeah. Yep. So he served the penalty on track. Once you go behind that person, you can gain all them spots back if you're able right. to. Right, and we've actually had it here in years past where we have given, like, somebody, like, it was literally, like, second place or third place got the signboard, yeah. and it was – halfway through the race and they dropped back two or three spots and it was in the lead group and they're able to get right back up yep. to battling the, for the lead in two right. laps. So right. it's, it's not the end of the world. And for the really no. good quality drivers, they're, they're interested. You know, they can do that. So. Right. Yep. Right. And, and Jason does a great job of Thank keeping you. them informed with those. You know, it's very rare that you're at a race and somebody's giving you a sign. They even tell you what to do. And, and it's, you know, just again, how CKNA has put this whole thing together, having Jason here, really just adds to this whole excitement and show. Yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, when I first came to and saw Jason out there with a different tuxedo on yeah. each day yes. and stuff, I mean, I said to my son, this is great, man. Look at this. Look at the flag guy. <laughs> so, uh, but, yeah, you do a great job. Thank you very much. I mean, well, we definitely appreciate it. I know the racers appreciate it because we've been coming here for a few years and my son's been racing, but... We, we definitely appreciate that. Thank it, you. A, a good flag person, a uh, main flagman, owns the track. You know, Chief, Chief Starter, he refers to Chief Starter. Yeah, okay, Chief Starter. Every, everybody I'll go with that. calls him yeah. flagman. Yeah, yeah. 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 Same know, thing. I'm old-fashioned. So, But, yeah, Chief Starter, that's what we need to keep, uh, you know, ruling, rules on the track, keep everybody together. And you said the right thing. In practice, they were kind of calm. Yep. Yeah, I know that's going to change. Wanna, yeah. <laughs> and like I said, practice this morning, kind of lighten the mood up that it's finals yeah. day, yeah. and we'll see what happens. Yeah. It's definitely going to see some definite action out yep. there on the track, and we appreciate you keeping your eyes out and the filming, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he does it all. Yep. So uh, great job. 
And again, part of CKNA that we do this. Okay. So we're going to go back live in about 10 minutes. So we're going to take a real quick break here. All we have left is 10 minutes to go to the bathroom before we start. <laughs> yep. <laughs> go down to the grid. <laughs> so, yeah. Grid walk time. So, okay. We'll see you in 10 minutes. Sign up right now. Where are you? Oh, we're not yeah. on anymore. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, sign up. Nine ninety nine. <laughs> sign up for the whole month. Do you have a program for a year, one year subscription? Anything? Like that? No. Okay. So sign up and, and do an automatic renewal if that's an option. Because it's <laughs> worth your while. So. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. We'll see you in 10 minutes. Okay. Thanks, Jason. No I didn't problem, mean to Jason. With you, but